Talk to Kevin back there, you think? Well, we can give it a try, BP. I, I know they're pretty far away, but let's see if we can reach them. Hey, yeah, uh, Kevin, this is uh, Wally D in the booth. Can you hear me? Oh, Wally, go ahead. Well, it was fun for us yesterday. I don't know how it was out there for you, but uh, it was a fun bush race. Uh, what's your guys' strategy for today? Well, I think right now, uh, keep it on the track, first of all. Keep everything together and, uh, you know, make a couple pit stops here. So, other than that, our GM Goodrich Chevrolet has been pretty good all week. He's just going to have to take care of the brakes. Yeah, that's a big issue here. Everybody knows that for sure. What um, are you guys, do you have a plan and you are just going to stick to the plan no matter what as far as making your pit stops and strategy today? No, everything should be good. We, uh, the brakes are the biggest concern of mine and the rest of it, uh, they tell me will be fine. So uh, we'll go from there. Okay, good luck, Kevin. Thank you. Kevin Harvick had a strong run here on Saturday, the race that was won by Kurt Busch. And of course, Robbie Gordon finished second. You take a look at the rest of the starting grid. Former series champion Terry Labonte is back there. You see in row 16, Bill Elliott. There'll be a new driver in that car next week for Everham Motorsports. He's next to Scott Riggs. Michael Waltrip, Paul Menard back there in row 17. Row 18, Martin Truex Jr. and Bobby Labonte in the 43. Behind them, Joe Nemechek and former Watkins Glen winner Kyle Petty. Dale Jarrett back in row 20 with Reed Sorensen. Greg Biffle in a backup car is in row 21 with Sterling Marlin. And Brian Simo starts 43rd this afternoon here at the Glen. Take a look at the guys that did not make the race and the guys that are going to the back. Mark Martin with an engine change. He's back there with Sterling Marlin. Biffle's in a backup car. And Mark Goosen's also going to the back, the young driver from Belgium. Field working pace laps here at Watkins Glen. The green flag coming up after a final report from Pit Road when we come back to the Glen. NASCAR Next Hill Cup Series Racing from Watkins Glen is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. This is Budweiser. This is beer. By Nextel, only from Sprint. Get closer to the NASCAR Next Hill Cup Series with Nextel. By Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving forward. Toyota. Moving forward, and by DLP Technology from Texas Instruments, HDTV doesn't get any more real than this. Cars are on the track. Let's get the final stories from Pit Road. Here's Matt. Bill, you've already heard a lot of concerns about fuel, brakes, and also trying to conserve and pad point leads. But if your board said, that I think is where the e-ticket rides is today, back in the 15th position. An impressive road course specialist with awesome credentials. And his goal today, just one, go to victory lane. He doesn't have any concerns about points. This is his final race of 2006 in the 60 car. He has a lot of success in NASCAR. He's got a first in the truck series, a second in Bush, and he has a third right here in Nextel Cup. He says, keep an eye on the 60 today. He has a great race car, and he intends to show it and become the first road course specialist since Mark Donahue back in 73 to go to victory lane. Dave? Matt, here's what road course specialist Ron Fellows has at stake today. His team that he's driving for this weekend is in the danger zone in owner's points. They're 37th. They had no guaranteed spot in today's race. They hired Ron to, first of all, qualify them into this race and then to hold a position that might get them into the owner's points next week. So Ron isn't going to do anything stupid out there, even though he's a very good road racer. But it does mean he's in his comfort zone. If he can race for the win, he will. Watch Fellows today. Marty? Well, Dave, let me give you the other end of the spectrum with several guys in this field who aren't so good at road course racing, including some battling for the championship, like Kyle Busch, who is currently fourth in the championship standings or tied for fourth in the championship standings, who admits this is not his best thing, not the best discipline that he does. He told me a moment ago, if I come out of here with a top 15, I am happy today. When they listed the tracks coming into the chase, they said, you know what? This is the number one track we're worried about, Watkins Glen. If we can leave there with a top 10, top 15 finish, it's almost like a win for us. Alan? Well, Marty, let's talk about something a lot of the crew chiefs face today, and that is an unusual pit strategy. You've already heard fuel alluded to a couple of times on the broadcast. Where normally on an oval track race, you start at the green flag and run as far as you can on fuel before pitting. Because you can run a green flag pit stop here at Watkins Glen without losing a lap, things are backwards here. You start at the finish, lap 90, and subtract the number of laps, pitting as soon as you can. If you stop sooner than everyone else, get lucky and catch a caution flag the rest of the cars pit under yellow and fall in behind you on the racetrack you've just gotten a free pass by all of those cars on the speedway one of these teams perhaps Kurt Busch's perhaps Robbie Gordon's down the turn one end of pit road might catch that lucky caution today it might be the difference between winning the race
and finishing, say, 15th. Bill? Thanks, Alan. You guys have a great day down there. To see the entire pit map, go to NASCAR.com's homepage and click on pit map. Jimmy Johnson, a winner one week ago at Indianapolis, trying for two in a row. The conversation on his radio just a few moments ago. Jimmy, the one thing that we're going to do a little bit different from the very start is I want you to try to conserve fuel from the get-go. Want to get a really good fuel mileage reading on this first stint, okay? Easy into the corner, short shifting, doing all that kind of stuff. No scrubbing the tires under caution. And don't get past. <laughs> Other than that, uh, you know, that's going to be tough to do. I mean, obviously, the short shifting is, is something you can get away with, but... Um, or you've got to run hard down into these corners. Or, you know, these guys are going to be all over you under braking. And road racing, I love it because you see more strategy at road races than any other racetracks we go to. These guys are going to pit as soon as they can get within a window. Take a look at our Chevrolet drivers to watch. Jeff Gordon, of course, the king of the road with nine road course wins. Tony Stewart going for three in a row here. Earnhardt Jr.'s best road course finish a third. Jimmy Johnson coming off the win a week ago at the Brickyard 400. So set up what we're going to see when they throw the green flag here as everybody charges for one. Well, really what you want to do is you want to be single file going up through the S's. So, you know, whether you're on the inside or the outside, you need, whoever you're racing with, you need to give a little bit and get single file because you can't run side by side up through the S's without bumping into each other or causing a problem. Or losing a lot of time on the guys that are running single file through there. So you have to be real careful getting through one. Hopefully everybody will get through there without making a mistake on downshifting or braking because everybody's so close. But you really got to just thread the needle going through the S's, then go racing after the first lap. I talked to a crew chief in the garage area this morning, and he was concerned about a lot of wrecks today because he doesn't feel like we're going to have a lot of get, giving. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of taking, taking. <laughs> but not much giving. Well, yesterday in the Bush race, we saw a lot of that giving earlier and a lot of that taking later, didn't we? We'll see what happens here this afternoon. A lot of guys racing for the win. A lot of guys looking at their position in the points. Just five races remain before the cutoff and the chase for the championship begins after Richmond. And, and I wouldn't be surprised. You're going to see somebody make it three wide BP, trying to get down. They're going to try to make a bunch of spots up. If you can get away with it, you can pass a lot of cars, but sometimes you don't get away with it. That's where the taking part comes in, trying to go three wide on the first lap. Kurt Busch and Casey Kane on the front row. 43 cars on a front stretch that is only 42 feet wide. All heading for turn one. About to put the green flag in the air at Watkins Glen. We're going racing on NBC. but I don't think there's any damage to his car. Boy, did a good job getting back in line there on a lot of traffic. If going through the dirt didn't hurt his car. Black flag for the 90 car. Passing to the right on the start. Ryan Newman going for the lead. Good area to try to outbreak somebody. Ooh, Casey Kane bobbled there a little bit. Wow, that's a great shot. I think those rocks are from the two car. They're still falling out. Jeff Gordon in the 24, Robbie Gordon in the 7. And Jimmy Johnson, then Kurt Busch. There's the pole sitter. Robbie Gordon Kurt's, taking a look. There's that saving fuel thing for the 48. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it, as long as you don't fall too many spots back, but it's hard to short shift. And go in easy and not get past, especially at the start of a race. And he sort got around Jimmy Johnson as well. Ryan Newman leads the first lap. Boy, Jeff Gordon making the move. Uh oh, three wide. Jeff Gordon, very smart to back off there. Robbie goes wide. He's going to lose the spot. Oh, uh -oh. contact Gets there. Kurt Casey Bush got Casey Kane back. Got him back. <laughs> Okay, so about that given part. <laughs> You're right, BP. A lot of taking so far. And this is just the first few laps. All right. Imagine what's going to be like at the end. Tony Stewart for position. Wow, a lot of smoke out of the 29 car. Kevin Harvick under braking there. 
Still a lot of Still smoke lot of coming smoke. out of that car. Looks like he's made contact with somebody up in there, maybe. Sure does. It's crushed down on that left front. You can really see it when the car is under braking. That's when the nose drops to the, the ground when you hit the brakes. Kyle Busch in the five. There's Kane behind him. Then Jimmy Johnson. Leading the second lap here at the Glen. Newman tries to move away. Oh, Kurt Busch underneath Robbie Gordon takes a spot. Looks like Robbie Gordon's having a hard time at turn one right now. <laughs> Also in the garage here this morning, talked about the 20 car and just how fast that car is. Robbie's car looks like it might be a little bit tight. Can't turn the car. No front grip. Saw some penalties back here at the bus stop or the inner loop yesterday. More on Robbie Gordon from Allen. Hey, Wally, I really hate to contradict you, but Robbie just called in on the radio and said the exact opposite, said the back end of his car is what's wiggling around. Very loose right now. That's the report. So he's got his hands full. Yeah, yes. Right. Ryan Newman finished second his first race here in 2002. A lot of smoke up. Yeah. Harvick's car there. Oh, Kyle, Kyle Busch almost missed the corner. He just made it a little bigger than it normally is. Kyle in the five. Kurt Busch on the move to the inside of Jeff Gordon. That's for second. Falls in behind his teammate Ryan Newman. And Stewart takes a spot from Robbie Gordon. That's for fourth. So two of the cars we expected to be strong, the two and the 20. Oops. Oh, Terry Labonte. DLP car. Definitely broke, a rear end. broke a rear end. Straight to the garage. <laughs> and there's Reed Sorensen. And there's Terry slowing down right there. Pulling off to the side. And then we'll cross the track after it's clear and go to the garage. Dave? They are reporting a broken rear end on that race car. Second and third gear broke. Man, transmission and gear. Yep, transmission and gear. Means that. Wow. That's too bad. Terry with a lot of success here at Watkins Glen. Tony Stewart working over the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. See what happens as they head for one. Yeah, Stewart's car looks pretty good right now. A little bit closer to Gordon to try to set him up going, try to outbreak him here in turn one. Working lap five, let's take a look at how the race started. And it literally started when the green flag came out. Yeah, look, you see Kirk Bush going down, and I think Casey Kane went to block, protect that inside, and he just got in way, way too deep. He tried to block Newman, and he got into uh, to Kurt. Robbie Gordon on the inside of Jeff, but he gets his angle all wrong getting in the corner. Can't make the corner. And there you see Kurt Busch come up and get Casey Kane back. A lot of fun stuff early <laughs> here at the Glen. Uh-oh. Somewhere in that dust is a car. Elliot Sadler, I'm told. Out now. Out now. And that's very likely, for this race is very likely Elliot Sadler's last race for Robert Yates Racing. Word in the garage this morning, an announcement tomorrow that there will be some changes. Marty, what do you know? Well, yeah, Bill, I talked to Elliot this morning, and he said it's likely 70-30 chance that he will be in the 19 car next week driving for Ray Evernham, trying to work all that out. Unfortunately, it looks like the race will come to an early end here for Elliot Sadler today in what might be his last ride for Robert Yates Racing. Back at the bus stop. Yeah, he got turned. Casey Mears um, helped him turn him, yeah. Bit. And that M&M on the back says it all. So Elliott Sadler's days at Robert Yates Racing in a cloud of dust under caution at Watkins Glen with Ryan Newman, the race leader. Still working caution here at Watkins Glen. Take a look at our AutoZone in the zone drivers for the 2006 season.
four top 10 finishes in his last five races. Matt Kenseth with those 11 top fives. And Kevin Harvick, one of the hot drivers as we head for the end of the race to the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. Elliott Sadler, the only car headed down pit road. We'll take another quick break and come back to the Glen. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Tell you what, he's been getting in turn one really, really good. Made most of his passes right there under braking. And Kyle Busch goes by Robbie Gordon. Take over that position. Now the short back stretch toward the inner loop. It was Paul Menard with the pass through penalty for missing the inner loop back there, not Michael Waltrip. Stewart runs third. There's Jeff Gordon. There's Robbie in the seven behind Kyle Busch. Report from Pitt Road is that the tire rub on the 29 car was caused by contact between the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick in turn one. Kyle Busch trying to set up. There goes Stewart. Nice move. That was a nice move on Ryan Newman right there. Track race down straight away, and Stewart's in a good position to make the outbreak move and should take that spot. Not much give there. Not much give, but Stewart's in the better position going into turn two here. Tony Stewart takes second. Kyle Busch not liking these road courses too much. He's doing pretty good right now. This is the contact we talked about between the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick. Marty. Right side, right side. Yeah, Bill, even that slight bit of contact did it in the left front fender of the 29 car for just a little bit, and it's only under heavy braking that it really affects that left front tire, but the tire rub has seemingly gone away. Since then, Jimmy Johnson has radioed to his spotter to apologize to Kevin Harvick under that last caution. He did that. Kevin said, no problem. It's a long race. And let's, you know, remember, you've seen these guys dropping wheels a lot and getting in the dirt and the grass right here, and that... That causes a lot of problems for those guys because if you drop a wheel in this grass and dirt, it's going to blow onto the, you know, the front screen for the radiator on some of these cars. These guys are going to start overheating. We saw that yesterday, I believe, with Jamie McMurray's car in the Bush race. So I talked to Greg Biffle about that this morning because he was behind the uh, Kurt Busch, Robbie Gordon experience yesterday. And I said, does that distract you as a driver? He goes, yeah, because it, especially late there going through the interloop when all that dust went in the air, you don't know what's on the other side of it. Yeah, you don't have to reckon. And, and you know, a lot of these, a lot of times you'll do that on purpose. You'll try to throw that stuff up behind you at the guy that's, you know, behind you. A little bit early in the race to be doing that, but. Tony Stewart working on the back bumper of Kurt Busch. Those guys in the garage area were not kidding about the 20 car being fast. Let's see if Stewart can pull that same move. That was a pretty, pretty good move right here in this left hander. If he doesn't do it here, if he can stay close enough, get down to turn seven. Kurt Busch got through there pretty good. Got through there really good. Just one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Picked up about two or three car lengths through there, so I didn't give Stewart the opportunity to be able to outbreak him going into turn one. Just want to let you know the scoring link, the timing and scoring link from NASCAR is down right now. That's why you're not seeing the ticker across the top of the screen. Robbie Gordon in the seven car. This was their radio traffic just a little while ago. We may win the race, but I can tell you we bought a sword to a gunfight as far as the motor count is. We lose as much today as we did yesterday on the straightaways. <laughs> Frustrating for a driver. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that when you're getting out driven on a straightaway. And that's what Robbie's complaining about. He just doesn't feel like he's got as good a motor as these guys that are in front of him right now. What did he say? He brought a sword to a gunfight? Yes. <laughs> that usually doesn't work out too well. Boris said he's got cameras all over the car. That's a great shot looking back at him. Gives you kind of an idea of 
how you look at the wheel, you look in the mirror, you're shifting, takes a look at his gauges. I think he was waving to the crowd there. I'm not sure what that was, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Goes through the left hander. Back to the right hander on the straightaway. Let's see, let's see if we stay with this shot. See how big his eyes get when he gets down to turn one. That's takes a look in the mirror, see where competition is. You have to use that mirror going to one, right? Because you want to know if you're being set up. Yeah, you really do. You have to look at have to look at the mirror all the time when you're coming off the corner to see how close that guy is behind you. Because you know if he's close behind you, he's gonna make a move going into one. So you gotta decide whether you're gonna just let him make that move or possibly block him. So every time you come out of the corner, you're looking up in the mirror, like right there, he takes a look. He wants to see how close these guys are behind him. So he knows how hard he's got to drive into the next corner to try to save that spot, or like I said, block a little bit. Right behind Jeff Burton. Here's uh, foot cam. The dance. Here's the dance. And, and, you know, he's one of these guys that is a right foot breaker. I think most of the drivers now are left foot breakers. We use our left foot on the brake pedal. We never take our right foot off the gas. But if you watch going in, he'll take his right foot off. Gets on the brake, heel and toes, downshifts. That, it's just a lot of work for your right foot to do. Now, if you saw his left foot came over and pumped the brake, and that's one thing you'll find a lot of guys doing at Watkins Glen, these brakes get soft because they get hot. And, and you'll come over and you'll tap that brake pedal like he's doing right there to make sure the pedal's there. So when he gets after the brakes going hard into one, he's got confidence that thing's going to stop. Because sometimes you have to stop in a hurry. Yes. Yeah, and if you don't have brakes, you're going to stop in a hurry. Matt? And Bill, what you were watching there, many call trade secrets. And really, Boris said is more like a professor for the majority of the drivers in today's field. They have all spent quality one-on-one -on -one time with him at various road course tracks in the South. He's trying to hone their road course skills, whether you're a rookie or if you've been in the sport for a few years. A number of guys still say they taught him so many things that they are putting in use today. Right now, the goal for Boris, just to hunger down and just pick off a few more spots before that first pit stop. Yeah, he's helped a lot of guys here. Don't think he's showing them everything, <laughs> but he's helped a lot of them. There's your race leader, Kurt Busch, here at the Glen. Started from the pole, won the Busch race here yesterday. So, want to be a camera guy? You have to be a real short one. Oh, and you have to stand on your head. <laughs> One of the drivers trying to make the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. Carl Edwards is 14th in the standings. There you see him, not in the position he wants to be in, Alan. There is the reason why, Bill. That is a cut in the right front tire on the Carl Edwards car that just came, this tire just came off the car. They changed four tires, filled it up with fuel, but that was shy of their fuel window. That's gonna be a problem later on today. You know, we see all those rocks with that camera back in the inner loop, Wally. Those rocks just do not agree with these racing tires. Now, there's, like I said, it, a lot, there's a lot of debris on the racetrack. When these guys are dropping wheels and pulling that dirt and grass and stuff up, you're right. Hot, sticky tires and hard, sharp rocks. They don't go well together. And here we go for a position. Kyle Busch around Gordon. Now Jeff Gordon. Robbie Gordon's going to take a spot away, too. Jeff Burton is on pit road. Marty? Yeah, Bill, first place man in the championship standings. Very much a scheduled pit stop for Jeff Burton here on lap 16. When I walked in the 31 hauler this morning, they were watching last year's race, trying to decide when would be the best lap to pit. They decided 16 and somewhere around 55. Matt? And Greg Biffle sharing pits at this juncture of the race, trying to get the fuel cell full of fuel. He stalls the car. Finally, he is away. They made a chassis adjustment to try to help the balance on exit of the corners. Bill? Thanks, guys. Man, these guys are looking at running 39, 40 laps on that last stop. Looks like the 11 car's got some damage on the right front as well. Denny Hamlin right there. And the 29 car going to pit road. Yep. Have the hand out the window. First gear, 4100. Here's Line Kevin Harvick. Quick. First gear, 4100. Currently fourth in the championship standings, heading for pit road. They might have a little trouble getting that right front off the way that fender is. They're going to have to take a look at that, Marty. 
Yeah, Wally, they're going to take a look at that left front fender, but Kevin made a point to tell his crew, listen, don't spend too much time on that left front fender because, honestly, it's not hurting me that much. Chassis-wise, for the 2019, the car has been excellent. So it's going to be four tires, no changes to the chassis for Kevin Harvick, who ran the top five for much of that run the last time. He was a little bit concerned about the brakes, said the pedals are a little bit softer than I would like it, but no big concern as of yet. It'll be a four-tire change, and again, just like his teammate Jeff Burton, very scheduled stop they too planning on pitting for their second stop like around lap 65. well the strategy begins boy early doesn't it it's amazing isn't it i mean these guys are going to run to lap 55 make another pit stop and they're done for the day that's it they hope they're done for the day that's right <laughs> that would be the plan that's right you have to guess at how many cautions are going to come out you have to figure that you might go green white checkers that adds some time to the race we're a little little bit tight turning into the right but we're really good coming off the right kurt bush talking to four, no changes when we pitch keep digging keep digging <laughs> richie for mccauley kurt won the pole at sonoma finished fifth there his best finish here is 10th in five races. Matt Kenseth is on pit road. Dave? Showing their hand, pitting here on, I believe it's lap 18 now, Bill, or 17? Let's count it. Working lap 19 right Working now. Working 19, I'm losing track already. His car was a little bit loose in the right-hander, so they made a chassis adjustment for that. Was also running just a little bit hot, so they took some tape off the front of the grill, and that'll fix both the hot and the loose condition. But they've got to be careful now. 35 miles per hour on pit road. And that just is an eternity going on these long pit roads. Matt Kenseth just now get into the end of pit road and here comes Kurt Busch by the start finish line. So Matt very close to being lapped. There were a few speeding tickets issued yesterday. And you're so close to the racetrack here when you're on pit lane. And <laughs> it's just, you're looking at all these guys going by and that right foot goes down a little bit more, a little bit more and you get busted for it. Very easy to speed here. Martin Truex Jr. has also been on and off of pit road. There's three-time Watkins Glen winner, Mark Martin. Currently scored in the 21st position. More on Mark from Dave. And they had to start at the back of the field. They had a motor change overnight, broke a valve. After lap one, he was scored in 40th position. So the former winner here trying to make his way back up through the field. And he knows how to do it. Excellent road racer. Really enjoys the challenge of road course racing as well. Last win here 11 years ago today, back in 95. Our Casey Mears just came in and serviced. And Bill Casey Elliott. Mears has been one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Yep. Well, you see Kenseth and drop back and see the race leader, Kurt Busch, while his brother heads for pit road. So that's what Benny was talking about. You stop, get your pit service, then you have to tiptoe off of pit road, and you have to hope you can hang on to the lead lap. Marty. Well, Bill Kyle Busch has been quite impressive in the early run here, running in the top five for much of this run. And uh, he said the car, it just needs more forward bite off of the corners. Just does not have enough rear grip for him. They take a pound out of both rear tires, trying to help him off of the corners, especially. He said also he's a little concerned as well about his brake pedal, a little softer than he would like, but an impressive run so far for Kyle. Matt? Very solid stop by Boris Sedd's crew. They made a chassis adjustment. He needed help on the right-handers, but also Frank Stoddard made an air pressure adjustment to help the car on forward bite up off the corner. Solid stop by these guys. Waiting on the 12 of Newman next. See Robbie Gordon making his pit stop. He comes out right in front of Harvick. Now all these guys have pitted if the caution pit flag. Now, pit now if you can. I think that was Kurt Busch's if radio. Right now, if the caution were to come out, Kurt has to get behind the pace car, and these fellows would make up almost an entire lap on him. That's what Alan was talking about before he went green. Matt, 
Right. Ryan Newman just missed his pit. Now keep in mind, yesterday in the Bush race, there was a 12, there was a 39. As he finally makes his way in, so there is sometimes some confusion, but he just overshot his pit. Luckily, he didn't go too far by. The chassis adjustment is completed for Newman. Almost a huge, huge mental error. Everything was good on the car, except the small balance issue in the S's. He drops it. He is away. Now, it was better he did that and back back up in the pit instead of going back around and doing it all over again because he lose way too much time coming down pit road. So that was the right thing to do. There he is coming on to pit road. Oops. I just went by my pit, he said. Matt? Bill, it's funny because I had a conversation with Ryan's father, Greg, this morning. He says, I'm surprised that more people don't have issues with their pit board signs. Just because of those different numbers that Ryan has driven in the past, he has a huge A on his pit board sign here as his teammate, Kurt Busch, and then Tony Stewart making their way down pit road. Now, a lot of times, I'll always have my guys count me down. Uh -huh. When they see me five away, they'll go five, four, three, two, and then that helps you dial in where you're supposed to pull in. Tony Stewart heading for his stall, Allen. And a little head-to-head -head battle here of these pit crews, as you see. Stewart closing right up on Kurt Busch as they made the entrance to the pit road. Stewart's crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, telling him that their pit stall is slanted downhill. Be sure you keep your foot on the brake. A four-tire change for the 20 car. To Kurt Busch, a little air pressure adjustment. They've also gone a round down on the left side track bar to try and help the rear end grip on the car. The race off pit road. Doesn't get much and better Kurt's going to hang on. Oh, just barely. But did you see how much space that Tony Stewart made up getting on the pit road? Mm -hmm. And they got to go. <laughs> Stewart would love to pass him going into the inner loop right here. Tony was hustling getting off. Yeah, the pit road. He, you know, that's time you got to make up right there. And Dale Jerry is right in front of them. Actually may slow them down a little bit coming through the interloop. Yes, he does. Tony. Stewart's all over him right there. Oh, he's got to take a look down the bottom, but there's not much room to do that. Unless it's the last lap. <laughs> if it had been the last lap, I would imagine the 20 yes. would have gone on. Stewart taking a look to the left. Three wide of the throw course. Yeah, I'm going to get this corner to Stewart. Matt, about that 24 stop. So 24 is in, and Wally, like you mentioned, Steve Letarte, Jeff Scucci, he called him down. Now Gordon is in the first spot past the media center tower. Kind of there's an island between. Now they made an air pressure adjustment. Gordon says the car was just getting killed on the left-handers. Not too bad, but especially on the right. CB? Casey Kane started up on the front row. He's going to pick for a four-tire change here. Kane had fallen back a couple of spots. A little bit of left rear damage with the contact that he had on the opening lap with Kurt Busch, but uh, nothing major according to the team. Dave? Mark Martin finishing up his stop now, roaring off four tires, no changes for the six car. Also on pit road, the 32 of Ron Fellows. Very tight race car, air pressure adjustment, four tire change for Ron. And oh yeah, Tony Stork got around Kurt Busch. Yep. These guys have been pretty evenly matched, really. I mean, right before they came in the pits, these guys were running really, really close lap times. So much going on, like you talked about, Penny, at these road course races all over the place. So much for the fans to see. And it's so unusual to watch a stock car race and see these guys pitting when there's no call the green flag, when there's no caution flag. Hoping it doesn't come out. Hoping the caution. And you'll see Jimmy Johnson. Allen? Well, Jimmy Johnson said the goal for the day was a top 10 finish. He was hanging right in there. Matter of fact, led for five bonus points toward the championship. They're going to make a four tire change here for Jimmy Johnson. Chad Knauss only choosing to make air pressure adjustments on this car all day today. He said not to look for them to do any other kind of adjustment once this race started. See, now Chad wants to get a good, he told Jimmy he wants to get a good fuel mileage. So when he gets to his window, it may be lap 55, lap 60. He may only run 25 laps on this run and pit again. Probably will be 30 laps, but. New race leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Four set spins. Down at turn one. Oh man, Sean, you got plenty of room. One more to come, all yours now, all yours. 
He was in the 22nd spot. Matt. And keep an eye on the front. Tony Uri Jr. back out of retirement due to issues in the rehab of Chris Crumley. He practiced with the team this week. Walt Smith, the pit crew coordinator, told me it was almost like Tony never stopped changing tires. He was in the low 13s, waiting on the fuel. Small air pressure adjustment. Jr. said he needed help with forward bite, but also the car just too tight. They worked on that as well. Tony Uri, he was as good as the rear man. Let's take a look at what happened to poor said just a moment ago. Yeah, we we're way into it there yeah. when we caught it, but hard to tell if he just wheel hopped going down in there. Or... Ah, this will give it wheel hop. Jump on the brakes and you get on the brakes too hard. The front goes down and the rear wheels are like on two big pogo sticks and it just jumps down the track. Scott Wimmer and Kyle Petty have not pitted. They're scored first and second right here at Watkins Glen. You're watching the AMD at the Glen live on NBC. Car of Kyle Bush. I'm coming to you. I'm knocking everything out of the bottom of it. That has brought out the caution here at the Glen. As well. A lot of smoke out of the back of that car. Terry Labonte has returned to the race. This is just coming out of the inner loop and whatever let go. Happened right there coming out of the inner loop on Kyle Busch's car. It's like something that the powertrain broke and, and blew the left rear tire. Marty, you got more on this? Yeah, yeah, they've been on the radio talking about it for a while. They didn't know what it was. Terry Labonte was behind that, and he radioed over to the team and said, it looked like to me that the rear track bar broke, and that maybe might be why the left rear tire is uh, has gone down. Obviously, they have to lift up the car. They're going to change four tires here, get that on, and they, they say it is indeed a broken track bar mount. That's what they're talking about right now. They're going to have to wheel it back to the garage and go fix it. This is the team tied for fourth in the championship standings. And remember, the first thing Kyle told me about, we talked at the beginning of the show, they just wanted to leave here with a top 15. This will put them in the garage for a while. This is not going to give them a top 15, Marty. That's for sure. This guy's been having some troubles with sway bars and that's things right. like that. And right now, Kyle Busch, as they run, third in the championship standing. Scott Wimmer to pit road, but he's got a speeding ticket. Elliot Sadler is the lucky dog. Garage, and you just hammer the brakes here. It's just you're so hard on them all the time. So what the teams do, there's openings in the front of the car. These rotors get really, really, really hot. And if they get too hot, they'll even boil the fluid in the caliper. So what the teams do, they run as many hoses as they can, pointing at that rotor, try to blow air towards that rotor to keep the brakes as cool as possible. A lot of guys will even run fans on some of these hoses. So that's one thing they do on a racetrack like this, is just try to keep them as cool as possible. And we've heard most of the drivers today complaining about brakes. A lot of drivers complain about brakes already. And P.J. Jones exploded one of those here right down here a year ago, right? Right. Then spun the car out, put it into the wall because he didn't have any brakes. Here's a good look at the inner loop or the bus stop as they call it. An update on Tony Stewart from Alan Bestwick. Yeah, Bill, you saw the racing back and forth between Tony Stewart and Kurt Busch, which Kurt is now in charge of. Tony talked about not wanting to run as hard as Kurt at this point in the race. And under this caution, he and crew chief Greg Zibidelli had a discussion about saving the brake system for the end of the day. Zippy telling Tony, in the big picture of things, it'll pay bigger dividends for them to have a little bit more left in the final laps of the race than it will to run that extra bit hard right now. So you know what you've got, but you want to have it at the end. Well, a lot of times you get these things too hot and they never come back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another problem. You can run them really hard, glaze the rotors. Um, they just get so hot, they just they turn blue. And like on PJ's deal, I believe that's what some of it was. Okay. You know, it just got so hot. And also the brakes, what happens is they get so hot and they cool, hot and so cool, that they warp the rotors. Those big rotors warp. And that's what happens going down the straightaway. They knock the pads back. So when you get to the corner, you hit the brakes. That's why the pedal goes down so far. 
is because of warpage in the rotors. So that's why you see these guys pumping them. What they're actually doing is they're pumping the pad back to the rotor so when they get to the brake pedal, the pads are on the rotor and they're there. There's not that gap because if there's that gap, the pedal will go further down to the floor. Race leader is Kyle Petty. Matt, they're coming to get the green. And his guys are waiting for him to come to pit road so they can fuel the car and put tires on it. They were staying out to get their five bonus points. And, you know, the 92 winner, he has said a number of times they feel like this team continues to make small steps, already building more and more for next year. And Kyle follows the pace car down pit road. And look at those cones up on the fence, though, Bill. They put those up there because guys couldn't see the restart point yesterday. And that's a big factor. Kurt Busch, the pole sitter, is the race leader. Green flag out again at the Glen. Kenny Schrader there in the second spot. You see all these guys diving to the right. Casey Mayer oh my is going to take about three of them on this restart. And I think Jimmy Johnson and Harvick ran into each other again going down there in turn one. Had an incident between those two earlier in the race. Knocked in the front left fender, front right fender actually. It was the left fender of the 29 car, left fender. Yes, left front yep. fender. Go Stewart underneath Schrader. Schrader in the 21 car, another car that has not pitted yet. He's got the track position right now, but he's got a lot of cars behind him that are on better tires that will pass him very quickly. Marty Moore and Schrader. Yeah, fellas, they actually did stop at lap six, took on four tires and fuel at that point. But what it does, BP, now they don't have to stop till lap 42. So Schrader can hang it out there in the top five for a little while longer if he like. That is, if he can keep that seven car behind him. <laughs> no, nope. that won't stop him <laughs> happen. Now restarts throughout the day are big here at Watkins Glen. Big at every track, especially here, though. And NASCAR warned a couple of drivers last time to make sure you pull up, you tighten up the field on the restart. Among those drivers, Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. They want the field tightly bunched when they come to get the green flag on the restart. Good move by Jeff Gordon. Take that spot away. On board again with Schrader. Yep. Through the S's. Casey Mears took a spot from Schrader. Hey, Mears has been running pretty good today so far. Robbie Gordon back underneath Jeff. As we would expect, into the, the inner loop. Yeah, Robbie sailed it into the inner loop. How about that? See that about 59 more times today. Here's closing in on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. Marty, you got some more on Mears? Yeah, one time he finished fourth here, Bill, and they're having an awfully good run today. The car is excellent, Casey. Not saying a whole lot on the radio, probably because he's a little busy inside the race car, but he said before they made that first stop on lap 19, he didn't want any changes to the chassis, and then slowly worked their way through the field with an excellent race car, trying to keep it up there in the top five right now. You know, Casey, would love to have another solid finish. Look at this behind them. Yeah, these guys are all just trying to make their way around Kenny Schrader. I mean, Kenny, although he stopped on lap six, his tires are shot compared to all the rest of these guys who have fresh tires on them. So he's just hanging on right now. And if he had stopped with Kyle Petty, he's still got to make another stop. Right. Although he's going to make two more stops anyway. He's got a traffic jam behind him. Here comes Earnhardt on the outside. Junior currently running in the 15th position. Like that 14th now as he gets by Schrader. Oh, we got trouble in the interloop. And the caution comes out. Mark Goshen's in the 90 car. Has and spun. Boris. And Boris around again. Take a look as they all try and jump into the interloop. That contact must start it back on the straightaway. Way back there, yeah. Everybody trying to funnel in to the bus stop at the end of the backstretch here at Watkins Glen. The caution is out. Kurt Busch is the race leader. Gets it in there. Gets it in. Garen drops the clutch and goes.
there's Boris. A lot of excitement here yesterday, setting the stage for today. Here's what it looked like yesterday at Watkins Glen for the NASCAR Bush Series race. Robbie trying the crossover. Holy mackerel, did Gordon drive that thing in? He's going to cross over one more time. That's an unbelievable move. I'll tell you what, that was strong, and he's on the inside, and they are banging doors. Here he comes. Whoa! Oh, to the inside! Wow! Contact! They're through the grass, and Kurt Busch comes out. Unbelievable. Hey, you got him. Nice job. Toward the start-finish line, checkered flag in the air. It doesn't get too much better than that. Kurt Busch wins a wild one at the Glen. And here are the unofficial championship standings for the NASCAR Busch Series. Kevin Harvick. He is just making uglier and uglier every week. Carl Edwards in second. The top five in the NASCAR Busch Series standings. Under caution here at Watkins Glen. We expect to see more of that kind of excitement as the laps go by here today. Good look at all the fans in the infield camping out for the weekend here at Watkins Glen seeing a lot of racing race here Friday night Bush race yesterday and the cup race today field coming to get the green flag. Now take a look at the carousel on this uh, close up shot here. Yeah see there's all this stuff right out here. That's all really loose rubber. And uh, when you get out of the line with your left front and you get in that stuff it is very slippery it's like it just all marbles and Looks like the track is coming apart, but it's actually just that fine rubber off the tires. It got Jeff Gordon's attention. Listen in. Just asking what they're going to do about the racetrack falling apart in the carousel. Thinking it's just rubber laid down on the pavement. Is that what they're thinking? Maybe, I mean, it could be that, but I mean, I just know when you hit it, it's like ice, and I hear pieces up in the fender wells. Yeah, all I know is they sent someone out to look at it, and they said that uh, they didn't see anything that was going to be a problem. So I would assume that's what it is, you know. And you heard the conversation between Jeff Gordon and Scritchy Steve Letarte. Similar conversation between Tony Urie Jr. and Dale Jr. He felt the same thing. It was indeed rubber. Green flags out. Guys. Terry Labonte was the lucky dog. He is 11 laps down. Kyle Busch has returned to the race. He has scored six laps down. Scott Pruitt going three wide. Tries to get on the inside of Hamlin and does. Pruitt Scott the driving the 40 car. All right. Bush has been getting some great restarts. And he was yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yes. real important to do that. And they know that because they don't. Somebody's going to have to try, or somebody's going to try to pass him going down in a one. So Denny Hamlin's going to return the favor. Got him. Sure did. He got a couple there, didn't he? Did he get around Boyer as well? Well, let's see. Nope. So Hamlin front of Stremmy or in front of uh, Pruitt in Stremmy's car. Stewart chasing Kurt Busch. Looks like Robbie Gordon in that seven car has made some adjustments to his car. It looks more competitive now than it was the first few laps. Alan, what do you know about Robbie? Oh, I'll just add to confirm what he said. They did make some adjustments on that first stop, but Robbie still wants more. On the first stop, he had them uh, do an air pressure adjustment to the car, and they also did a track bar adjustment. Benny, you, can, you guys can explain what those uh, might do to help the car, but he still wants the car to have more rear grip. He still says he's sliding around too much off the corners to get up there and do anything with Tony Stewart and Kurt Busch. So they're trying to use those to help the handle of the car. They're trying to get, yeah, they're just trying to put more grip in the rear. They do that by air pressures. Obviously, they they made that track bar adjustment, helping them in the corners as well. See, he's, you know, it looked like on the on the restart he, he got up there, but now he's falling back again. These guys are starting to pull away from him a little bit. Yeah, as soon as they put a lap or two on those tires, he's that loose condition or no grip in the rear. Rears its ugly head again. And we know he's not exactly happy with the power he does or doesn't have today. No. He's going to throw the sword to a gunfight. <laughs> Bobby finished second here yesterday. Ryan Newman stepping out of line, trying to take the position from Jimmy Johnson. 
do it. See if Harvick thinking about getting underneath the 48. Is he there? No. And these guys have kind of run into each other quite a bit today already. A little already. bit of a history between uh, Harvick and Jimmy Johnson today. Danny Hamlin's got a pretty good run on the 29 car right now. I don't know if he's close enough to try to outbreak him. Not this time around. We look back at the 11th car. This season, you would say, if you look at the season that Denny Hamlin, with his lack of experience, you would say he would really suffer at Watkins Glen. He hasn't suffered too much. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Running the ninth spot right now. Marty, what do you know about Denny? A lot. He's a good guy. He's from Virginia. What else you know about him, Bill? What else you want to add? Uh, okay, I'll tell you about his race car. Is that a deal? Sure. He calls it a rocket ship under that last caution. He said it's very good. But Wally, one thing he said interesting under the last caution, he said, I don't like the gear selection we have for restarts. He said, I'm losing positions when we go into turn one. You saw him fan out to the right. That was more to block other people than it was trying to get some positions himself. But just doesn't like first gear. Just not enough power going into turn one, especially on restarts. Huh. Well, that's he's something stuck to write down in the book for next year, exactly, right? Exactly, because he's stuck with it for the rest of the race. <laughs> but some, you know, there are some guys take turn one in second gear. It just depends on how, how you do have the cars geared and what you like. Some guys use that real tall first gear to try to get through turn. Whoa, Jeff Burton sideways. These guys are really dropping wheels to the inner loop. Pat Trice and the crew chief of Mark Martin told me for the first time in a long time, Mark Martin is not going to first gear here. In turn one. He's been yeah. going to first this time. Uh-oh. Car off. That would be... Bill Elliott. That's what I thought, Bill Elliott. Got to wait for the dust to clear. That's right. <laughs> I don't think he's driving out of there. It's pretty deep. That looks like he's about up to the axles. on board with Michael Waltrip in the Napa ride and watch. Well, we saw Dave Blaney make contact and both of them spun the field ends up in the kitty litter. Kyle Busch will be the lucky dog. Bill Elliott needs a toe at the Glen. Still working caution here at Watkins Glen. With 39 laps complete and Kurt Busch, the race leader, on board with Jeff Burton. Time for our singular race talk question. Will someone besides Jeff Gordon, Robbie Gordon, Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, or Kyle Petty win today? Those are the five previous winners here at the Glen and the starting field. To vote, text the word race to 191 on your singular wireless phone, and you'll have a chance to win a first-class trip to Wally's. I mean to Miami. Nobody coming in, everybody staying out under caution here at the Glen. We'll sneak in another break. Working the caution here at the AMD at the Glen on NBC. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Sunday night football continues on NBC. John Madden and Al Michaels bring you all the action in Cincinnati as the Redskins face the Bengals. 8 Eastern tonight, Sunday night football on NBC. Coach Gibbs looking for the win tonight, looking for a win this afternoon. Tony Stewart trying to repeat as winner here at the Glen, currently running second behind Kurt Busch. Another one is car, Denny Hamlin running in the ninth position. And J.J. Yaley is back in 21st in the third Joe Gibbs entry. And Hamlin's looked pretty good. He's looked terrific. We'll see on this restart if Stewart and Gordon stay a little bit closer to Kurt Busch when they threw the green. You love the restarts. Here. I do love the restarts. Green, green, green. Stewart's a little bit closer. Don't know if he's close enough to pull out. Oh, Robbie Gordon knows how to block. Doesn't he go <laughs> down in there? the S's. Pretty swift through there, huh? Yeah. Here's Newman. Ball's back in line. Behind Mears. 
See if they all make it through the bus stop this time. Oh, they're trying to wreck. Boris was back in that mess, wasn't he? That time they warned Jamie McMurray to stay closed up on the restarts. And what these guys are trying to do, they're trying to lay back a little bit and anticipate when they throw the green. So you got a little bit of a run by the time you get to the start finish line so you can pull out on the guy and make the pass. That's why they're laying back a little bit. Trying to get that momentum going for them. There's Denny Hamlin. FedEx Chevy takes a spot away from Harvick. This is Hamlin's first next Hell Cup race at Watkins Glen. Had a good run at Sonoma and ran here yesterday in the Bush race. And won the NASCAR Bush Series race in Mexico City right. back in the spring, which I thought was his first road course race ever. He's a quick learner, I think, this boy. Talk to the guys around that team. They believe he is. A lot of these guys, especially the rookies, some of the veterans also go through the Bob Bonnerant driving school. Uh -huh. and they pick up a lot of a lot of tips that help these guys understand how you break, how you downshift, where you're supposed to be, you know, entering the corner, exiting the corners. And some are quick learners. Uh oh, oh Greg Bell. 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 Boy, it has been a tough weekend for him. That's a backup car after a practice crasher. Who did he, what he hit? Or who did he hit? It sure looks like another car, doesn't it? No, let's get it to the garage. Let's get a radiator in this thing. We gotta go. Greg Biffle is 13th in the championship standings right now, desperately trying to make the chase for the next Telcop. Newman takes a spot away from Casey Mears. That'd be fifth spot. And Casey Mears has a caution flag is out. These pesky cars look really good today. Caution's out. Matt, what do you know? Bill, under further review, the 16 is now going to take the car back to the garage. At first, they were going to do that, and then he said he didn't think he was having any issues with the radiator, and then when they pulled it in, they could see the damage, the water leaking. He is back to the garage, and you heard him say in our countdown to green, today was an important race. He had changed his target because of where he sat in the points and where he was sitting on the grid. Tough break for the Biff. We'll pick it up. The caution is for debris. Pick up the replay just a little bit late. Well, he gets the inside guardrail. Someone ran the back of him and turned him into the inside guardrail. Yeah, you can see the damage on the left rear. Watch. Yeah, there's somebody going to get in his left rear. That's on board with Kyle Petty. Looks to me, Benny, like a lot of these guys are, I, I don't know what their deal is on the brakes, but it looks like they go to hit the brakes and they're either going in way too deep and the car's not slowing down or they just have some brake issues. Kyle Busch once again is the lucky dog. Kurt Busch is the race leader. We're under caution at Watkins Glen with 46 to go. Another hit. Six wins last season, had a backup car in today's race after the crash earlier in the weekend, 24th at Pocono. That knocked him out of the top 10, 33rd last week at Indianapolis, and certainly not what he needed today. Greg Biffle currently scored 41st here at the Glen. And Kyle Busch has made up two laps in the last five or so laps. He's been the lucky dog recipient twice. And really, because they'll still be working on Biffle's car, he'll be the only guy looking for that lucky dog for a while. And talking about the last six races from in, uh, from Sonoma to Indianapolis, the number one rated driver over the last six races, Kyle Busch. Scored more points, has the win, four top tens. And now trying to make up some ground here at the Glen, currently 42nd. And that has dropped him back to ninth in the championship standings. You can see the lights are out on the pace vehicle. Guys are warming up their tires.
trying to scrub that debris off those tires. So the first corner they go into, those tires will stick. Listen to this conversation just a few moments ago from the two team on restarts. Hey, if we sit under green like we did earlier, we can uh, do something to trick that 20 where we get him on your outside through there and we can leave him out so we can get some separation. We about had him earlier, but uh, but he dove in there. Yeah, he's, he's a smart fella. Yeah, 10-4, yeah, he caught right on to that deal. He dove right in. Now, that wasn't about restarts. That was about trying to let fool him when you're coming on pit row. Everybody looks pretty tight. Here we go, Wally. These guys in the back are doing it. Casey Mears, he's underneath. Ryan Newman, looks like he's going to take that spot away. So Mears now behind Gordon. Jeff Burton. But trust me, these three starts will get a little bit more aggressive oh, yes. the further we get into the race. Yeah, like you said, we're just two halfway. Yep. Watch Ryan Newman. He wants it back, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does. He's going to try to outbreak that 42 car. That Robbie Gordon was flying through that inner loop again. He gets through there pretty good. About a lap or so after the restart, he seems like he can hang with Stewart, but then they start to pull away. There's Robbie running third behind Stewart and Kurt Busch. See if he can hang on to him a little bit here for a couple laps. Kenny Strader just made his second pit stop, but he still has five laps to go. Yeah. I just don't think he can run that far in the tank of fuel. Well, Kurt Busch leads. Let's take you through the field. We'll start with the two car, and here's Allen. And the leader, Kurt Busch, who has been well out in front for much of this race, Bill, only shuffled back by some pit stops and other people on differing pit schedules. Kurt talking about earlier this weekend with me, trying to balance that difficult thing between racing for the win and racing to get into the championship. Nice solid finishes is all we need, and I think we've done that the last seven out of eight races. Uh, 12th being uh, one of the times we were out of the top 10, and then Loudon, we ended up getting spun and wrecked. You know, those things happen, no problem, but man, we're still hanging out right in 12th spot. But what's happening is the guys 7th through 10th are getting a little closer to us, even though we still are away from 10th. Those guys, if they have a problem, now there's not just one guy, there's four guys that are right there on the cusp. Kurt using Matt Kenseth's charge into the chase last year as some inspiration. Feels like they've got some good, good cars for these next several races coming up. Tony Stewart feels Kurt Busch's car here at Watkins Glen today is good, good, good. Tony and his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, talking under the last couple of cautions. Tony evaluating how to make his car better on the one final remaining pit stop coming up so he can maybe overtake that two for the win. Robbie Gordon doing much the same thing. He and his crew chief, Greg Irwin, talking recently about making adjustments on the final pit stop. Greg told him what he had in mind, and Robbie said, I need more to be able to win. Matt? When Jeff Gordon began the season, they felt like they needed to improve their road course program. It slipped a little bit. Gordon, nine times a winner on the road courses. He won back at the Infinity Raceway. Right now, he runs fourth. This is the car is about 10% better, but it's horrible on the right-handers. They need to really work on that on the next stop, Marty. Matt for Casey Mears in the fifth position. He said he has one problem on the racetrack. It's turn five, the long sweeping right hander. He said through there, it feels like the car just has no front grips. He turned off the rear fans for the car because the rear tires were just chattering too much. Right there is where Casey has that tight condition, Matt. Ryan Newman would love to get up there and battle with his teammate Kurt Busch in the two and try to solidify an all Penske weekend here at Watkins Glen. He says the car is much better through the S's. It's a little bit tight down in turn two, but he can deal with it, Marty. Matt, so far Sunday going much better for uh, Denny Hamlin than Saturday did. In practice yesterday, the first practice, they lost a the transmission. In the second practice, he had a little off-course excursion. Today, everything on the blacktop, and so far, the 11 car very, very fast, Alan. And let's talk Jimmy Johnson, the championship leader who's running in the eighth position right now. He started up in fifth. Jimmy, coming into this weekend, thought that he needed to improve as a driver on a road course. He said it's kind of hard to understand how I can be outdriven by a couple of these guys, but I'm working hard to be better than them, or at least as good as they are here on a road course. Marty? 
Alan, in this exact part of the race course, David Srimi is the man spotting for his normal ride, the 40 car today driven by Scott Pruitt. He's clearing him left, clearing him right. So far, Scott says the car at the beginning of the run just plows, no front grip at all. The car extremely tight, but the longer they go, the better that race car gets. Behind him, Kevin Harvick, the man tied for fourth in the championship standings. His car is tight both in right and left-handers. Bigger concern maybe is the water temperature. Right now, 235 for the 29 car. They're going to pull off a piece of tape on their next stop, Dave. Ryan Vickers pitted under green at lap 22. Car still a little bit tight now, a little bit loose off the corners, but he restarted 13th. He's passed two cars since that time. The 07 of Clint Boyer, they pitted under green under lap 20. The car was loose. It said it needed some grip, uh, but they've been able to work through their problems today. Actually, it was running hot earlier from contact on lap one. But that condition has been corrected. Marty? Dave, in the last caution, Jeff Burton came on the radio and said, man, we are shattering the front tires on this thing. And he also has a brake issue he's a little concerned about. He said he doesn't want to go full pedal with the brakes because when he does go full pedal, so that makes a car chatter even worse. And the rear, wheel, rear wheels pop. Alan? Ten positions gained in the race so far for Jamie McMurray in the Roush 26. He started in 24th position. You see he's running in 14th. This team had two potential top ten finishes slip away in the last two races. Indianapolis and Pocono by probably on pit stops. They'll look to get this last one right in a few more laps, Dave. Alan, I spoke with Matt Kenseth's crew chief this morning. That's Robbie Reiser, and he told me, I don't know a lot. I don't know. Well, I don't know, and it appears they do know what they're doing today. He started 30th. He's cut his deficit in half, currently running 15th. One car of Martin Truex Jr. is uh, running uh, right behind him, having a pretty good day. This is the same road course car they took to Sonoma. Martin's been keeping it on the black all day long. And driver A, Dave, Dale Earnhardt Jr., his best finish here in Nexo Cup, a third of 2003, but he has a bush win. Now, Jr. says the car has been going back and forth balance-wise. It's tight everywhere, uh, new tires, but the car is loose, especially in that whatever turn, that final turn is closest to you guys out on pit road. <laughs> It's not good there. Heavy seven, man. <laughs> seven. Matt fades away. Those are the top 17. Ron Fellows 18th, and Joe Nemechek is running 19th. There are currently 40 cars scored on the lead lap here at the Glen, and the race leader continues to be Kurt Busch. Came in 174 points out of 10th, but a year ago, Matt Kenseth was 168 behind 10th at this point. And Matt made the chase for the championship. There's Kenza, former series champion, junior right behind him. Got Ron Fellows here in the 32 car. Here are the championship standings as they run with 39 to go here at the Glen. And Check out Denny Hamlin. Yep. He came two spots today with his run so far. Fifth. Man, points. amazing. Gordon up to sixth. Kyle Busch. You know, you have one bad race in these stretches, and you see a lot of that. The minus fours or the minus twos or plus fours just because these, these guys are so tight back here right now. Four races to go before the cutoff after today. They go to Michigan next week. It's Pruitt working on the back bumper of Jimmy Johnson right there. Those top three cars are strong. Yeah, gone. And, you know, Robbie Gordon has been able to hang a little bit better this time around with the two car of Kurt Busch and 20 of Tony Stewart. Marty on Scott Pruitt. Yeah, Scott says the car, this is really the part of the run where the car gets very good for Scott. He told me that objective today is a little different. Normally he comes here in a one-off car, but he's racing for a team that's trying to stay in the top 35 in championship standings. So he said, our goal, be conservative today. Just get home with a top 15 finish. If we can get a top 10 out of it, great. But he's got an awfully good car, especially at the end of these runs. And Marty, Scott Brewer told us earlier in the weekend, this road course racing is fun to do, but hard to learn. It's a real different animal to deal with. Now, if you look at a lot of these guys are very talented. I mean, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon. I mean, those guys are road racers. I mean, they have road racing in their background. But if you're looking at, you know, pure guys like a, uh, like Stremi, for instance, perfect example. You know, he hasn't had any road course experience, and getting a feel for the whole thing is, you know, it's. I wouldn't say it's daunting, but it just takes time. It's like any, it's like taking a road racer and putting him on on uh, Darlington. You know, you want to overdrive the car and, and get sideways and, and overdrive the racetrack continually where the guys who know the place 
place and do it week in and week out, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, piece of cake. Strategy starting to play out. The race is underway on pit road, Marty. Well, Bill, here we go. This could be the final stops of the day. Jeff Burton's car actually spinning out a little bit of water. He said his car was a little too tight and really no overall grip, so they go down all the way around on air pressure. His teammate Kevin Harvick pitting further down pit road. He too tight, also an air pressure adjustment for Kevin Harvick. Probably the final stops of the day for these RCR cars. Oh, Joe Nemechek into the tire barrier. What a fabulous strategy for these guys. Yeah. They make a pit stop and now they get to make up the entire distance they spent on pit road. Yep. That's oh, what we man. talked about, about, you know, there's all these different strategies, but you've got to be lucky. And these guys that just came down pit lane are lucky. Kurt Busch is on pit lane. Did he get on pit road pit lane quickly enough? I don't know. That's going to be real close. Heading all the way down toward pit exit. Allen. Well, that'll be the whole debate, won't it? If he didn't get on pit road before it was closed, then it's going to be a problem. But if he did, it's a great call. Roy McCauley saw that car spin on the big Jumbotron monitor right across from his pit box and immediately jumped on the radio, called for Kurt to come to pit road. It's a four-tire change for this two-car. Now we'll just see if they are clear of the uh, rules or if they ran afoul. No, it looks like, looks like they ran afoul. Uh. That hurts. This happened to Jeff Gordon oh, here. Hit it again, Chris. Hit it again. We got time. In this race a year ago, hit it again is with the fuel can. It wasn't the NASCAR official that was holding him. They were holding themselves to get debris off the grill or something, wasn't it, Alan? Betty, Betty, what they were looking at the uh, the light that signals uh, the, the stop and go paddle at the end of pit road was red because the field hadn't cleared yet and the caution was out. When, when cars pit under the caution flag, they're held at the end of pit road until the last of the field clears, and then they rejoin at the tail end. So that red light was on at the end of pit road to allow the, the tail of the field to clear and make sure that Kurt and the other cars on pit road rejoined at the tail. Now you see Roy McCauley in the discussion with the NASCAR officials trying to get clarification on where they stand as far as coming on to pit road. Gotcha. Yeah, what does the tie go to? Yeah, the runner. <laughs> this is identical to what happened to Gordon a year ago. Kyle Busch is the lucky dog. Let's work that in. Looking on the right side. And the light, the official is there. Oh, oh the red light is on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That Whoa, is. Whoa, how close you're, is you're that? You're committed there. I mean, you back it up. You're cool, Bob. I Watch mean. the front of the car right there. Okay, that's, I don't think he's at the line yet. You see the light right there. Oh, man. That is so. Pity too soon is the official call, I'm told. Oh, man. Oh, man. Just a few feet. Might have, may I, not have been that much. I wouldn't even say a few feet. Yeah, no. Now, Joe Nemechek in the tire barrier brought out the caution. Go back and sort that out. Well, we've seen a lot of contact back here today, and that's exactly what happened. Joe Nemechek got run into. Could not tell who that was behind him. But that inner loop is barely <laughs> big enough for one car, you know, and we've seen a lot of guys going there side by side. Now, this time, somebody just got into the back of Joe's bumper and, and turned him. So Tony Stewart is the race leader. Now, Tony Stewart, Robbie Gordon, all these guys, and they can make their pit stop under the yellow. But what's going to happen is they've got to restart behind all the fellas that stopped earlier. Matt? And Matt Moreland reminded Ryan Newman exactly where he was pitting. He says, you don't have to remind me. I remember the last time. Small air pressure adjustment, Newman's car, Really good, he says. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him. His car needed some big time help, Marty. Matt Casey Mears in that 42 car. Bottom of your screen hits pit road, running for it. So they couldn't pit earlier because they were worried about a green white checker like we had yesterday in the Bush Series race. No changes to the chassis, Allen. And a four tire change for Tony Stewart. And some chassis adjustments you see there being made with the wrench in the left rear of the car. He's going to swing around Casey Kane to get off pit road. Not ahead of him. 
traffic. Something, hey. something you don't really see that often on a road course. A lot of congestion, but everybody takes it easy exiting, gets clean. Let's take a look at the race off of pit road. Kurt Busch will have to restart at the tail end of the longest line for pitting too soon. Carl Edwards. Newman. Pete Stewart off the pit lane. And we see Mark Martin in the six car up there. So evidently the 99 and six uh, pulling some strategy. How about those pit crew guys, BP? Oh, man. Brian Chase, the jack man on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Left side, he follows Tony Urie Jr. around. Gets that left side jacked up. Watches the left, the right, left, right. It's all done. Go. Back to green flag racing. Reed Sorensen is scored as the race leader. Kurt Busch claimed he was having radio trouble. Restarted second. NASCAR started to pull out the black flag. Busch pulled over in turn one to let the field go by. He had to restart at the tail end of the longest line for pitting too soon. They're going to give it to us. Go. That's his crew chief, Roy McCauley, saying you're OK. Alan, what do you got? Uh, a little bit of confusion here as to what it is they're telling him. I think Roy's confused. What NASCAR is telling him is that he's not going to be black flagged because he was dropping to the end of the field and giving up that spot. Roy was trying to talk to Kurt from pit road right in front of the NASCAR officials, and there was nothing coming over the two teams' radio. So they were having trouble, and that's what got him right up against that restart without Kurt getting the message to go to the back of the field. And that's because they lobbied very hard against the penalty, Alan. Oh, absolutely, they lobbied hard against it. They, they were right up against that line, and at that point, you know, how much choice did he have but to come down pit road? Could he really turn back out onto the racetrack right then? No, without a doubt he could not. I want to show you one other angle of Kurt Busch coming We're to right, pit road. They're wrong, but I can't, I can't do anything about it. Here he comes, off of turn seven, headed for pit road. Your mission, get there as quick as you can. Okay, watch, watch, watch to this left, left. You'll see the lights right coming to the corner, right there. See the lights? They're red already. And that's, that's the biggest thing right there, that you can't come down pit lane if those lights are red, or the, and, and the problem is it's so close. I mean, like you say, once you're there, you're already committed. But unfortunately, NASCAR was right on that one, and that hurts. That hurts having to go to the back. And, but there's no way in the world that Kirk could have no. gone back on the racetrack. That's what I'm saying, once you're already committed. So they need to change that around for next time. But Kevin Harvick on and off of pit road. Has taken the lead caution. from Reed Sorensen. Saw him there go around Reed Sorensen, but Marty was working on a story down there on Harvick and Fuel. Marty, you down there? Hey guys, when uh, the 29 car left pit road, the vent tube, which holds the fuel in the fuel cell where they put the fuel in, and the fuel filler neck was open, and it popped back into place as they left pit road. The concern, though, is they lost about half a gallon of fuel in the 29 car, and when you're racing to the end on fuel mileage, you need every ounce you can get, so they, they think they have enough, but the green-white checker, now that may be a question. Wait a minute, Marty. I thought I saw some fuel coming out of that car in the essence. And it may, may not be shut. It may not be shut. They asked us to get a shot of it, but it it looked shut when we showed a shot of it during commercial. So they thought they had it fixed, but it may not be the case. Looks, oh. oh. Looks like Mark. Yeah. Gosens again. Guy Mark. Yeah, I'm fine. Almost the wheel coming up the S's here. Full course yellow. First NASCAR Nextel Cup start. It's in the in the S's, I believe. That's, that's coming off turn seven there, and that's a brake hose, a blower off of some car. Oh, we just saw that black thing. You're right in the S's. So under caution again, Greg Biffle returns to the track. Biffle currently scored 43rd, 16 laps down in the AMD at the Glen. Ever had here, weather has been spectacular and the people up here 
has all they've always treated us great now it's not treating Kevin Harvick very good right now watch this been a little moisture in the air over here in the S's and that would be fuel coming out as Marty reported you can see the fuel coming out of the overflow there and he's losing a lot of fuel right there BP there's simply a little flapper valve in that vent tube that, that when the lead pit road is supposed to go shut so it keeps the fuel in the tank not happening and that's uphill you can see the issue there Marty see how concerned the 29 team is how worried are you about losing that fuel Todd well um, if we had a, if we could calculate how much we lost uh, <laughs> can you get out there and catch all that yeah yeah or can plug it off um, honestly we're uh, three gallons to the good so it's going to how much we lose as to how you know uh, how much we're going to have to have but obviously we keep having these cautions every three laps like we have so for the whole race then we're going to be really to the good but you know, it's just a gamble on how much we've lost at this point. Is there really anything Kevin can do to, to make that not happen? Nothing he can do, is there? No, nothing. I mean, as it burns off, you know, it's going to go away. On the restart, we reminded him. And, I mean, obviously, just not to jerk it around, swerve it around as much as he can under caution. But racing is racing. He's got to go as hard as he can go. So, obviously, it's just uh, cross our fingers and hope from this point on. They played the race perfectly thus far. Now they just have to hope for some more caution laps. Thanks, Marty. We'll be watching that on the restart as well. Take a look at our Craftsman Pit Summary. This is going to be a mess. Yeah. Tony Stewart comes out 14th. Gordon 17th. Newman 13th. And Kyle Busch about 38. And other guys use different pit strategy. Mark Martin is scored 17th, didn't take tires. And some other guys use different strategy to try and make up ground as well. The 99 car, I believe, Carl Edwards might have just fuel only. Bush sitting in the 37th position had to restart uh, at the tail end of the field after coming down pit road when it was closed and uh, he's an emotional kind of guy. Kurt, I, I, I don't know what to say, man. I'm doing all I can. I'm, I'm about in tears here. I mean, we were already committed to the pit anyway that lap. We were coming in. I, I don't understand either, man. Hey, you would hit the barrel. Crazy. I'm arguing the case. I'm sorry, Kurt. I think I'm upset now. I wasn't before. Don't worry. I got the upset part covered. Believe me. <laughs> got to kind of yeah. try and keep your driver calm down there. Yeah. Don't you? Well, I don't know if you want to keep him calm down or not. He's pretty, pretty mad right now. Sometimes you do your best driving when you're mad. Roy McCauley got Kurt to victory lane here yesterday. Let's take a look at the results of our singular race talk question. Will one of the guys, the five former winners in the field today, repeat? Doesn't get too much closer than no, that. No, it sure doesn't. Those are the five previous winners here at Watkins Glen. Right now, Kevin Harvick, the race leader. McMurray, Sorensen, Riggs, Elliott Sadler, the top five. I guess the first previous winner is Tony Stewart in 10th spot. And he's had a pretty decent car today. Oh, he's had a really good car. Very fast. And he's got 30 laps, so if he passes one car, per lap he's still looking really well he's got Boris said right in front of him back there here's on board with Boris so all the set heads here at the track this morning about 400 strong rooting for Boris here at the Glen so Harvick's the race leader we'll watch him take the green flag We'll see him go up through the S's and see if he's yeah. spilling anything. That was a lot of fuel they were dumping, for sure. See if that continues. Longer haul out of turn seven to the start finish line. Green flag in the air. Watch him fan out going to one. Jeff Gordon. Now McMurray's got a great restart. Harvick went down there to block because he figured McMurray's going to try to outbreak him. Oh, they're two, three wide uh, back there. Yo. Raider and Riggs. Holy mackerel, four wide. This may not work. Robbie Gordon makes it work for him. See the fuel again spilling out of Harvick. Just dumping out that 29 car. Tony Stewart making a run on Boris said. And a, ooh, and a 26 car almost had the lead in the interloop. Oh, oh there big it is. crash. 
Joe Nemechek is in it. Sterling Marlin. Scott Wimmer. Brian Seymour in 34. And you could almost feel that coming. You really back could. I mean, one. when you look back and saw those guys three and four wide, it just does not work through the S's. And this will tie the record for the most caution flags here at Watkins Glen set in 1988. Wow. Our eighth caution flag of the race. And Kyle Busch was the lucky dog, and he was really lucky there. And we'll find out, but he might be the lucky dog again under caution at the Glen. Fine. Little nudge just on the opening. And I think all uh, Casey was doing is we was worried about the 12, trying to block him and forgot to put the brake pedal. <laughs> We had Elliot Sadler gets turned, goes in the uh, kitty litter, as DP likes to say. On board with Terry Labonte. Kyle Busch has a uh, track bar they think broke in the rear of the car. Lap 34. Looks like four said got tagged. Yep. He wound up both spinning. But. They both continued. Lap 43. 43. Kyle Petty gets into the back of Biffle, going into the inner loop. Biffle hard into the guardrail. And then back to the garage. Joe Nemechek got spun out of the inner loop. Two car goes to pit lane. Only yep. the. Go ahead. The pits were closed. You can see the light is on. Now, if Kurt Busch had gone straight through the pits and had not stopped and blended back in, there would not have been a penalty. He had to restart at the tail end of the field, and he and Matt Kenseth both got a piece of this. But I don't think he, I don't think they knew they broke any laws when they came in and pitted. They didn't get the conf confirmation until the, the car was gone out of the pits. Mm -hmm. But you have to put yourself in a position to know that. Uh, driver's going to put him in position to or say it was green when you're coming in. <laughs> or a spotter. No or a spotter to watch. The exact same thing as we've talked about happened to Gordon last year. Yeah. It almost, you know, in the exact same location. But the problem is, like you say, Bill, it, it, whatever the reason, right. I mean, it, it puts you back in traffic, and on these restarts, it could take you out mm -hmm. of contention. And it did. It just took Kurt Busch out of contention to win this race. And he had a car to win it. Our Napa field summary. And of course, Kurt trying to get in to the chase. And this will not help his chances at all. Currently 14th in the championship standings. Continue to work clean up here at Watkins Glen for our eighth caution of the day. 26 to go in the AMD at the Glen. Late in. You're on your own at that point. You've got to, you've got to make your own decision. More on Matt Kenseth's problems from Dave. They've about got it fixed to the point that it will run around the track and not cut the tires, they think. And this will be a blow to their uh, championship standings. Uh, we saw him just a, uh, in, a, in the points a few moments ago. Talking to Robbie Reiser this morning, he said, I'm in the mood to gamble today, almost like they had one race to give away. Well, they've given it away in another way <laughs> today, unfortunately. And Matt will tool around for the rest of the day trying to hold his position. By the way, guys, if there's another caution for Dupree, <laughs> it may, uh, it might may. be off the 17, but these guys have done a good job getting him back on the racetrack. That is one ugly car right there right now. Talking to his crew here over the weekend. As you see Kurt Busch leaving as well. They were, they liked it last year when it rained, and they only got five laps of practice. They said they were in a better situation there. Just having some fun with the driver. Allen on Kurt's problems. Yeah, they, you see that the right front fender on the two car bill. They have tried to rebuild the fender piece to give Kurt some downforce. They were just this last pit stop putting some bracing in behind it. They've also checked to make sure their brake ducts were still getting air to the brakes on the front of the car. Obviously, the design is to give Kurt what they can to charge as hard as he can. Think about all the points that they lost in this last half hour or so. They need to try and make some of them up before the end of this race. Hey, Alan, how's the old uh, two uh, radio right about now? Well, uh, it's been focused the last little while. Though. The emotion's pretty much out of it, and they've been trying to focus on getting the car rebuilt to where they can compete. Uh, they've been trying to get the front end back in line. Kurt told them to put another set of tires on. He ran over some debris out on the racetrack. They've really been focused on trying to get the car back together. 
Now it's in Kurt's hands from here to the finish. All right, we'll be watching. Lights are out on the pace car, ready to go back to green. This morning I just saw a jet dryer out there. Yeah. I was going to say, you know you're having a bad day when you're behind the jet, jet dryer. dryer. <laughs> Kevin Harvick is the race leader, but Jamie McMurray has really been pushing him the last few laps, and we'll watch for fuel out the back of the 29 car. But remember, they bunched up on the last restart. Here we go again. Harvick again with the block. Keep the spot. Watch behind him here. Oh, here we oh, go. There we go. Gordon's Jeff Gordon's around. around. And I don't think there's going to be a caution flag because of that. So now Jeff Gordon goes. Even even Kurt Busch is in front of Jeff now. And I think Jeff got tagged there on that deal. I know he did. And we see Jamie McMurray once again trying to get by on the outside. I tell you what, that's the hard way to do it. But that's all Harvick has given him is the outside. Every time Harvick comes down into a passing zone. He pulls down to the inside, so he figures if McMurray is going to pull it off, he's going to have to do it on the outside. And Tony Stewart has moved into the fifth spot. What about Jamie Allen? Uh, there we go. Uh, and how he got up to second place, BP. They pitted under the green at lap 56. Remember, I talked at the very top of the broadcast about if there were some way you could predict when the cautions were going to come out. They caught it just right. They pitted under green at lap 53. The caution came out. It got him up to second place by staying out under the yellow when everybody else pitted. Marty? Alan, if you'll notice last time, Kevin Harvick, when he went up through the S's, did not lose fuel, at least from what we could see. And it takes Harvick a little while to get going. Remember, he cannot scrub off his tires under caution. I can see the cars weave back and forth, cleaning off their tires. Harvick cannot do that. Now, in terms of the fuel, when they left pit road, they were four gallons to the good, meaning they had four more gallons than they needed to finish this race. Question is, have they already lost four gallons, or have they lost less than that? And we won't know that until the end of the race. Here's Tony Stewart taking a spot from Sadler. Again, again, McMurray looks underneath Harvick. But ooh, wow, that's close. I think Stewart is going to be uh, challenging for the lead here in a few laps. More than 130 races since Jamie McMurray won at Charlotte. His only victory in the next Tell Cup Series. How about Elliot Sadler? We saw him in the kitty litter earlier yeah. today. And here he is. Ooh, Tony going for second. We'll watch this race up front, get more on Sadler from Marty. Yeah, Bill, it seems like a week ago when Elliot Sadler brought out the very first <laughs> caution of the day, doesn't it, when he was in the sand trap. A little strategy got them to the front. Lap 45, they pitted for four tires and fuel. Then on lap 52, fuel only. They're done pitting for the day, and they have a car that's running in the top five. Fairly good, even though he found his way to the sand trap, much like you do on, a, on many occasions, Bill. Thanks, Marty. I appreciate you pointing that out. It looks like McMurray got a little bit offline there. Get up the S's, so we'll see if Stewart can close in on him and make that pass going in the interlude. What's happening? Jamie McMurray is watching his mirror now. Yeah. His rearview mirror, watching that 20 car and, and not concentrating on the road enough. I'll tell you what, though, Jamie is getting into the corners good. He's got a lot of brakes in his car right now. But I think you're right, Benny. I think he's starting to look up, figure out where Stewart is and where he's going to go when they get down to the braking zones. And when you do that, you lose the leader. And a disappointing season for McMurray, his first year with Roush after making the move from Ganassi Racing. Finished 37th in the Daytona 500, 23rd at Vegas. He's 35th at Bristol, 37th at Texas. There's Jeff Gordon trying to get some spots back. Did he lose that many spots? Take a look at what happened going down into the corner. On board with Michael Waltrip. Looks like Mark Martin got into it. In front of you, Tim. Just one of those deals. Everybody's oh, jamming so down yet. there into the corner on the restart. Not enough room. The field goes racing by. Tony got around Jamie McMurray into second and now sets its sights on Harvick.
Stewart's definitely got the fastest car right now. More on Tony Stewart from Allen. Bill, uh, you, you, you have some experience monitoring Tony Stewart's pit, right? Oh, yes. What, what does Tony say when things are going well? Uh, not much. He, nothing at all <laughs> in this last stretch of the race. Tony said earlier, when Greg Zipanelli was asking him about his race car, Tony came back and said, it's all right. And that was it. So here we go. But he can be very entertaining to listen to. Oh, yeah. Yes, he can. But uh, not today. This has been a very low-key day on the radio for Tony. Very businesslike, especially now that he's trying to get by Kevin Harvick to see if he can get this win. Well, i tell you what, Kevin Harvick has a pretty good race car last time by. He was a tenth of a second faster than Tony Stewart. And, of course, Stewart going for his third straight win here at Watkins Glen. We talked earlier in the race about Mark Martin winning three in a row here. Tony trying to do the three-peat at the Glen. And trying to improve his position in the championship standings as well. Stewart's chasing Kevin Harvick, and Marty is in Kevin's pit. And, Bill, you can imagine all the things Harvick's trying to do inside that race car. Watch the 20 car behind him. Make sure he's not losing too much fuel. One interesting thing that just came on the radio, they thought, don't use as much brake in the left-hand turns, because that's when he's losing all the fuel, because that's where that fuel filler nozzle is, right behind that Goodwin Ford. At the beginning of that Goodwin Ford is where that fuel filler nozzle is. So in the left-hand turns, use less brake. In theory, that should uh, make less fuel spill out of the race car. Also, as always, the less brake you use, the better fuel mileage you get. That's a great theory but it's not being used trust me Marty. <laughs> you got to use all the brake you can right now if you're going to stay in front of tony stewart going down in these corners so don't think he's worried about the fuel thing right now he's just got to go nothing he can do about it really unless he wants to give up the lead mark has the three in a row here now that last lap tony stewart gained a tenth on kevin harvey Jeff Gordon also has Wow, he gained a lot right running. there. He just closed in two car lengths under braking. Well, it's a left-hand turn. Harvard oh, that's right. He's using right less, less brake. brake to oh, save fuel. Forgot about that. Let's see if we can't find where uh, Kurt Busch might be. in the 25th position. Guys have had to do a lot of work on that car. Started from the pole. Now tangled up in that mess in the S's. You want to talk about somebody that's determined. Restarted 33rd on Whoa, lap 67. Kyle Busch. Trying to get underneath Mark Martin. That was a pretty brave move right there. And pull it off though. Might oh. try again. Wow, he is. Going for it, Marty. Yeah, he is. Wally, as things went bad for one Bush brother, they got really good for the other Bush brother, Kyle Bush. Get this, have got, has received five consecutive lucky dogs. And yes, after breaking the rear track bar mount, he is back on the lead lap. And I tell you what, the car is awfully fast. Problem is, you're going to have the track position to show it, Alan. Only comments from Kurt Busch, the big brother, on the radio since the restart. A little concern about making sure that his brakes and a brake cooling was put back in place under the repairs. Other than that, not much. Just concentrating on trying to pass as many of these cars as he can. See, the five car looks a little bit like Kevin Hart did to begin the race. One of the fenders rubbing the tire. Oh, oh. he gets turned on tag yeah. anyway by Earnhardt. We'll check up with the 50, uh, the 55 a little bit. I think Earnhardt just waving out the window going, sorry about that. <laughs> One of those racing deals. Well, you know, I saw Kyle put his hand out, but I also Earnhardt, saw Earnhardt wave. I don't think he meant to do that. They go around Michael Waltrip. The five really had to check up on Michael, and I think that's what happened. He made a nice save. Yeah, he did. Jeff Gordon working on the outside of Boyer. Oh, oh there goes Earnhardt. Wow. Just barely touches the barrier. Man, that thing had a lot of front brake in it. But will it start? That's the key now. And so far, the answer is no. Thanks. There it goes. 
Clark gets it refired. I got it running, guys. He's going. 17 laps to go, Dale Jenerson. He's got another too hot. Yeah, that thing that, but, but look at BP, he's got the, the fronts are locked and the rears are actually rolling. Like he's just got a lot of front brake in that thing and kind of weird. That was strange. It just looked like the rears were rolling a lot too, you know, really easy compared to the fronts being locked up. Junior continues. And he's got a lot of ground to make up. Harvick trying to stretch it out over Tony Stewart. Talk about Tony winning the last two here. And Mark getting his three consecutives wins in 93, 94, and 95. Jeff Gordon has four wins here. His three straight came 97, 98, and 99. Kevin Harvick, just part of the Richard Childress family. They've made great strides in recent years, and now Harvick wants to get himself locked into that chase. Come Down on. in turn one Big. at the end of the front stretch. He just got in there. Got in there pretty hot. Got in there too hot. Spun the car around. The tires are, are slippery right now. The brakes are hot and real hot <laughs> on some cars. So. <laughs> Trying to get that thing fired up for the leaders. And here come the leaders. He's still sitting there. That thing won't start. Caution. What we're here out. Seen. It is out now. Caution is out. And this really sets oh up boy. something for 10 laps to go. Now we're talking about a restart in the last 10 laps. You got Harvick and Stewart, McMurray there, Robbie Gordon, Ryan Newman, Jeff Burton, Boris said, all these guys are ready to pounce. So all the, the yeah. Race record for the ninth caution flag of the day. I don't think uh, Mr. Harvick wanted to see that. No. This is not what he wanted to see. What's Robbie Gordon thinking right now? Oh, he <laughs> is licking his chops. Are you kidding me? So it's Harvick, Stewart, Jamie McMurray, Robbie Gordon, and Ryan Newman, your top five. Let's uh, get a strategy update here, starting with Snyder. Build under under the caution through the field, and Kevin Harvick's team is uh, not too concerned about the fuel anymore. There's been no mention of it for quite a while. Kevin was asked about his position in the championship standings earlier this week. He said, we just cannot afford to make any mistakes. The teams who make the chase will be the ones who don't make any mistakes in the final five races. They're hoping the fuel holds out, and they can hold on for a win at Watkins Glen. Alan. Two laps ago, Tony Stewart called in under green to his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, and said, keep me up on the laps. In other words, he wanted to know how many laps left in the race. He was told 14 to go. Tony Stewart tried to judge what he needs to do to get the win. Jamie McMurray having a great run. Best finish this season so far as a second place run at Dover in June. He's running third now. His crew chief, Bob Osborne, told me this morning he and Jamie getting together on the package, the feel Jamie McMurray likes in the race car and the chassis settings they need to make them go. Robbie Gordon running fourth says that he he needed this caution to help him get his car squared away for the finish. Cool things down, get squared away to go. He described it as a big problem, but the caution should help him have a shot at these guys in front of him. Matt? A.B., before the caution, Ryan Newman had just motored into the fifth position. He was eight and a half seconds from first. And Matt Borland just told him, like, we've heard a lot of other crew chiefs talking, reminding the driver, the sevens there, the 26, the 20. Some interesting things could take place. Be on your toes. But Newman was the fastest on the racetrack the last couple laps right before that caution. He just needed this break, Bill, to have a one more shot at a win here. Good point, Matt. He restarted 14th on lap 67. Now in the fifth spot. Big day of sports here on NBC. Got the racing going on now. And the NFL tonight. Sunday night football here on NBC. Alan John will have the call. The Redskins and the Bengals tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Sunday night football on NBC.
on board with Terry Labonte. He's 10 laps down. Really not too bad after changing transmission and rear gear. Wow. This is going to be some restart. Or restarts. Yes. <laughs> Might be we may see more than, than one. one, yeah. Because you know Gordon's going to dive down in there. At least he did yesterday. No, uh, he'll do it today. <laughs> and, and, you know, Tony Stewart knows the best opportunity he's going to have on Harvick is on these restarts. He said, these guys just got to, they can't let the leader, I mean, obviously the leader's trying to make the best restart he can. That's what really won the race yesterday for, for Kurt Busch. But on the other hand, these guys, if they're going to try to beat this guy, they got to be really on top of the game on the restarts. Marty, you hanging out in the 29th pit? Yeah, Bill, I'm hanging out down here. I bet Kevin Harvick is uh, worried about that 20. Meanwhile, Todd Barrier is just about to about to go crazy down here. How are the nerves holding up? Ah, they're all good. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing we can do about it, but, uh, you know, you got to feel bad. You know, you just got to kind of wonder what's going to happen and cross your fingers here and hope because that's all we got to do right now at this point. Are you just worried about turn one and the restart? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The restart's here. Turn one and the bus stop back there both. I mean, we got to have a couple really good laps of getting in the corner there. I mean, lap for lap when... Uh, we're in clean track there where it's good or better than Stewart, but obviously um, he, he's going to be able to get us in the breaking zones if we don't break as well as we need to. So right now we got to do that for a couple laps and then hope for the best. Can they keep the 20 behind him? That's the question, Alan. Tony Stewart's crew chief, Greg Zipidelli. Greg, has your driver sized up Kevin Harvick any, and, and have you seen anything that gives you some hope you can get by him? Well, the hope I have is we have Tony Stewart, um, and we're at Watkins Glen. We've got a pretty good track record here. Um, 29 car looks really good. Um, I think I, we missed it. I needed to adjust on a little more. It looks like it's a little bit tighter than it was yesterday. We were really, really good and happy with our car. Um, we've been trying to free it up without, without getting the back end out of the racetrack. Um, we haven't been terrible. We, we, we've been a second place car most of the day. You know, uh, two car was it was was awesome. But uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. The Home Depot Chevrolet. Uh, it knows it weighs its way to victory lane here, and uh, we'll just count on Tony now. That's yes. probably not a bad plan. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Greg. Matt? A.B., the yellows have helped and hurt the 12 team. You've had quite a day, Matt. Now your man is sitting there in fifth. What did you tell him on the radio about the restart, especially diving into turn one? <laughs> Just to watch what happens with the seven car there. He's, uh, he's probably one of the best there is at uh, outbreaking people. So it'd be interesting to see if he puts a move on the leader and uh, he get pretty excited. And this is the kind of run that this team needed at this part of the season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's not over yet, so hopefully it shakes out good. But uh, it's been good all day, and uh, hopefully we can all tell Dodge home we've done a good finish. The Penske guys having a great weekend. In fact, Bill, before the Bush team won yesterday, Roger Penske's group hasn't won here at Watkins Glen until 1973 when Mark Donahue dominated everybody in that Sunoco Can-Am car. Thanks, Matt. Uh, some cars ducking onto pit road, including championship leader Jimmy Johnson, Allen. Yeah, Bill, and I, I just got over here, but they were back in 25th place, and I don't think that, that uh, there's a problem, though. I will double-check on that, but really, this is one of those, what have they got to lose by taking on fresh tires here? How far back are they going to fall? Well, they'll come out probably around 35th, I guess. Yeah. But you can pass a lot of cars on fresh tires right now, and <laughs> it could have a big yellow somewhere, too, so... Probably a good move. Coming up next, the Manhattan Beach Open. The Manhattan Beach Open presented by Bud Light AVP Volleyball. Coming up next on NBC. Got the racing, the volleyball, then some football for you tonight. Let's get an update on the eight car. Dale Jr. Bill started the day 10th in the championship standings. Now, he came on the radio right before he just recently pitted, and he told the guys it is just wheel hopping terribly, and the fronts and rears at different times are locking up, so not a great day for Dale Jr. And by the way, if you're wondering about Jeff Gordon, all he said on the radio was the car is a lot better, but the spin was partly my fault. A.B.? And Matt, I did just talk to Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, and that is the call. They had nothing to lose at this point, but to come in, throw four tires on, and see how many cars they could pass in these last laps of the race. And if we get a restart or two or three or six, yeah, we'll have more opportunities to pass them. As long as not, is he's not in the wreck. <laughs> yes. Like what happened to Kurt Busch. And believe it or not, Kurt Busch, even with that damage, has moved up to the 18th position. I 
lights are out on the pace car. Get the green flag this time by. Kevin Harvick currently third in the championship standings and Jeff Burton fourth. Both hoping to make the chase for the next Tuck Cup championship. Just showing the resurgence of Richard Childress racing. A few years ago, those teams really struggling. Now they're both in the top five in the championship standings. And that's the, the basically the model that Robert Yates Racing is going to try and use, I would imagine, to bounce back from the difficult times they've been through. This probably Elliott Sadler's last race for Yates Racing. And Robert and Doug Yates going to try and build that organization back up. I just saw Robbie Gordon pointing. He had his left hand out the window and he was pointing over. I wasn't sure who he was doing that to. About to find out, maybe. Pace car will head for pit road. Kevin Harvick will break him down. Remember, NASCAR has warned the drivers to stay bunched up on the restarts. Do not lag back. He's got a pretty good run. Takes a look underneath Stewart. Oh, didn't have enough. Wow, that was close. Well, boy, that helped Kevin Harvick. Yes, it did. That one two car length advantage you needed for the interlude. Up through the S's. Well, I'm not sure we've seen everything Tony Stewart's got out of that 20 car. Got a good run there. Flying up the outside. Oh my gosh. He's going to clear him. Like I said, <laughs> just blew right by Harvick. That was pretty strong. Now, Robbie Gordon's going to be looking to get by McMurray because he's got to clear these guys if he thinks he's got a shot at winning this race. But like I said earlier, McMurray's getting into the corners really good. He's very strong in the braking zones. Now Harvick will try and go to work on Stewart down the front stretch. And Robbie's right there on back of McMurray as well. Eight laps to go. Harvick stays Ooh. on the ball. Oh, Michael Waltrip has gone around. Stewart got in there awfully deep. Stay under green. Kyle Busch making the track a little bigger, and now the caution flag is out. This will be our 10th caution of the day. Let's see if we can see what happened to Michael. I don't know if wow, there's contact between he and Boyer or not. On board the 55. Ouch. That hurt just to watch. Well, we're going to get another one of those restarts. Only this time, Tony Stewart is the race leader. road course Marty let's talk Tony Stewart and championship he's had his troubles over the last couple of months that dropped him down now to where he is ninth in the standings coming into this race I talked with Greg Zipidelli the crew chief this morning about if he's had any team meetings or talked with Tony or his team about where they stand in points Zippy told me there has been no point discussion in his race team shop he doesn't want to put the pressure of the race to the chase on his team he wants Tony and the crew members to just concentrate on doing their jobs and they'll worry about the points later. Matt? AB, some concern down in the 12 here. Ryan Newman, right as the caution came out, says he's having some kind of issue with the transmission. Now just trying to hold on, see what he can get here with, what, about six laps to go, Wally? Yep. Six laps to go when they come back by the start finish line. Tony Stewart has won three of the last four races at Watkins Glen. Has finished 11th or better in six of his seven races here. Think about him winning the championship last year, performing well in the chase, had that great run in the summer months, came here to continue his winning ways, then raced on to his second Nextel Cup championship.
and you heard Richard Childress talking to Kevin Harvick, and you could hear in his voice, just stay calm. Yeah. We want we we might be able to win the race, but we're going to be able to get some points, and that's going to be a good day for us. Stuart, Harvick, McMurray, Gordon, Ryan Newman, top five. Boris said in the 60 car, currently running sixth. And he has earned our Ford Bold Move of the Race Award. We're on board with Boris. He goes down the inner loop, gets tagged by the 90 car, but he doesn't get stuck. He doesn't get stuck. Listen. He somehow <laughs> drove that baby out of there. He didn't waste any time, and he wasn't giving up either, was he? Our Ford bold move of, of the race to the leader of the set heads, Boris Said. And I'll bet Matt's got more on this. Well, they've got 400 fans here that seem to follow Boris around wherever he races. This team really hunkered down, Bill. They last pitted on lap 50, and they just worked the cautions. Boris worked traffic masterfully, working his way right now on a, a nice top 10 finish. Boris told me next year they have big plans for this team right now, just trying to end what could be their final race of 2006 on a very positive note. And also, what about the 41 of Reed Source? And they last pitted around lap 44, playing the cautions as well. Very solid run for somebody who went off course this weekend and, and just trying to build more confidence here on the road courses. Boris said is a cult figure when it comes to NASCAR Next Talk Up Racing. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I think it's awesome when they get into it. They love racing. I love racing, so uh, it's got a lot in common. The hair is a technique that I picked up in the Far East, and uh, it's actually been modified by Boris, but you know, I'll, I'll let him get away with it. You get to wear the hair. A lot of cream rinse and, and the long comb. Try to get her tamed down for the race. He's the guy to beat. The guy to beat today. Because I still feel more like a race fan than a racer. So to have fans is kind of kind of different. But if I wasn't racing, I'd be doing the same thing now. I tell you what, the way my hair's falling out, I might be a candidate for one of those wigs. <laughs> we'll try and hook you up with Boris. He runs six. Tony Stewart's the race leader. More from Allen. Yeah, what goes through your mind when you're leading the race and you're riding around here on these long caution laps? Well, a lot of different things. Tony just jumped on the radio a minute ago and said, I'm good on fuel, right? <laughs> Greg Zipidelli hesitated for a minute, looked at his car chief, said, what did he ask? Was told what the question was and then came back and said, oh, yeah, don't even worry about that, Tony. Just trying to think of things to keep He's him occupied. Worry about everything yeah. when you're leading. He got five laps to go when you take the green. He's really worried about the guys in his mirror. Harvick and McMurray. Watch the seven car of Robbie Gordon. And once again, we will, will remind you that NASCAR has told the drivers stay bunched up on the restarts. Lights are out on the pace car. They're coming to the green flag. Be five laps to go here at the Glen when they get the green flag. We heard Kevin Harvick say that his car doesn't want to stop or turn or turn, but Brakes, I guess, his biggest good. concern, yeah. yeah. Boy, he's bringing him down pretty slow right there. Green, green, green. Oh, here comes Robbie, but McMurray puts the block on. Oh, there's contact between Borset and Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards. The short back stretch to the inner loop. McMurray out of line trying to get a position. Falls back in behind Harvick. Well, Robbie's taking a look, man. He's right there. If McMurray just bobbles one more time like that. Robbie Gordon will make the move. Allen, how about the seven? Well, remember I said he had some sort of unspecified big problem before that the cautions helped out. Apparently the brakes had gotten hot on that seven car. The cautions have allowed Robbie to cool the brakes. He feels like he's got enough pedal now to go after these guys in front of him and try and do something in these final laps. Robbie Gordon uses brakes? Uh, yeah, I think so, like everybody else here. Oh, he gets a little bit sideways right there. So does McMurray, though. 
but he lost a little bit of ground on McMurray. Uh oh, Kyle, Kyle Petty around. And he was running in about 14th position. Yeah. Had a great run going. Kyle back underway. <laughs> Here comes Robbie again, yeah. right? Just, yeah, Robbie just got a little bit too sideways getting off of seven, lost a lot of ground on McMurray. So now he's got to gather it all back up and try to get close enough. And he is driving the wheels off that thing right now, but he can't get the car really bad out of shape when McMurray's just going to keep driving away. Hey, he's got Ryan Newman behind him. Newman coming back after missing his pit stall early in the race. Now runs fifth. Oh, look at Kevin Harvick on the inside of Stewart down the straightaway. Let's see. For the lead with three to go. That's a big move. Very impressive. Tony wants to make this crossover. Couldn't make it work. Got McMurray right behind him. Or maybe he's just going to pull the same move he pulled a moment ago down the back chute. Going to be tough to do it a second time. Yeah, I don't think he had a run. He had a run on Harvick that one time coming up through the S's. Not quite the run this time. These guys are using more dirt and rocks, too, now. Robbie trying to stay hooked up to those front three. McMurray losing a little bit of ground there. Also, the 12th car, Ryan Newman, losing contact with Robbie Gordon. Problems for the 12, Matt. Bill losing ground to Robbie Gordon due to the fact that they believe the motor mount is broken. He says the engine, the throttle hung wide open last time by. So now he's just trying to nurse this 12 car home and fend off the 60 of Boris said he's trying to close in. Two laps to go. Excellent, you're pulling off the corners. Good job. Harvick heard his car owner Richard Childress tell him, you can still win this thing. Really good looking. Pretty strong through the S's there that time for Harvick. And that's what he's got to do. He's got to come off those S's really good. He can't give Stewart an opportunity to get close enough to pull underneath him and outbreak him. Got through the bus stop, Marty. Yeah, Bill, also in that, hot, in that conversation, Kevin Harvick was told by Richard Childress, you're better from the middle of the corner off than the 20 car, and that's what he used in that last corner on the front stretch here to pass the 20 car. He also told him, remember, we're big picture racing. You don't think Kevin Harvick would be conservative, though, do you? He's going for the win the whole time. He'd love to get back to victory lane. One earlier this year at Phoenix. White flag this time. Final lap flag, at the one Glen. More one more time. And all Todd Barry of the crew chief can think about is gasoline. Or lack thereof. Or lack of gasoline, yes. How much did we lose? Had a lot of caution flags. I can't see it being a problem, but I, I there's think no way of knowing. Yeah, I think Marty said they thought they were okay with all the cautions, but I'm sure they're still thinking about it. One more time through the inner loop. And no pressure from behind right now. Oh, I saw it coming. Borisette and Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman was blocking the heck out of Borisette, and I think they're both. Somebody spun out in the inner loop right now. Kurt Busch. He spun back there. Kevin Harvick coming off the final turn. He can see the checkered flag. Kevin Harvick wins at the Glen.
his first road course victory. His previous best here was a fifth in 2003, his fifth consecutive top five finish. Seventh of his career and his second win of the 2006 season. Impressive drive today for Kevin Harvick. Chevrolet congratulates Kevin Harvick and the 29 Monte Carlo SS on another great team Chevy victory. 25 of the last 34 NASCAR Manufacturers Championships and counting. Chevy, an American revolution. Away from Robbie Gordon, Scott Pruitt, Kevin Harvick celebrates and so does his crew, Marty. All smiles down here in the 29 pit, and these guys keep meticulous notes. At one point, Todd Barrier wrote down, I'm about to throw up. You handled it okay, though. Congratulations. Yeah, I was actually talking to Scott Miller and Jazzy up there on the 31. You know, I was like, cross your fingers, man. You know, if we, get, if we can get 395 and we didn't spill more, if we didn't spill more than three gallons, then we're good to go to the end. So we were sweating it a little bit, but, I mean, obviously, we, we got there. We couldn't do anything about it. We couldn't stop. So uh, good Lord was looking after us. How much were you worried about the fuel? And when the 20 passed you, did you think it was over? I didn't think it was over because I knew our car was pretty good on long haul, but we weren't as good in the braking zones. But uh, we just had a new engine package we brought here for the first time, made a lot more torque, and we passed the man off the corner. So obviously that was a big deal today. Obviously they did. Middle of the corner off. That's what they told Harvick. You can beat the 20 there, and that's where he passed him. Started seventh. Now he's headed for victory lane. Now here's what Wally was seeing. I thought I saw these two guys going after it, and they were going after it. And, and Newman did spin. Yeah, they did get entangled up. And Carl oh, Edwards goes down through the sand trap. And it looked like um, Kurt Busch got in the back of uh, Jeff Burton. Oh, Casey Keenan is like the last corner, isn't it? Yep. That turn six. But he kept oh. going. Stayed in wow. it. He lost a lot of spots, though, by the looks of all those cars going by. Second week in a row, he's had oh, a the tough last lap. lap. It's also on the last lap. Yaley around. It's like a flat tire yep. on Yaley's yeah. car. He's in the grass. Fun watching the closing lap for one. Yeah. Has been this weekend. The fans that came here this weekend really got their money's worth. And the Harvick celebrates. And when the smoke clears, you see the race winner. Happy Harvick's gonna be happy. See the results on the bottom of the screen. Unofficially, Harvick third in the championship standings. Well, he Jimmy Johnson, he uh, Matt Kenseth. beat a guy that's been pretty oh, tough yeah. around here for the last couple of years. Speaking of which, Dave Burns. And Smoke didn't make it three in a row today, but gave it a pretty good try. And we thought when you blew by Kevin with just a few to go that that was it. What happened? I think I just overdrove the entries and exits. He was good. We just, well, we, I knew my only shot was to get him back there in the back. and. Uh, he gave me the outside. He didn't want me getting on the inside, and I got by him on the outside, but hang on. He's going to go congratulate his friend, and, uh, you know, there's probably someone in Victory Lane that can uh, continue the interview. <laughs> Race hard, clean. Yeah. A lot of respect between those guys. Kevin Harvick into Victory Lane. I wonder if Tony's going to go back to Dave. I would. <laughs> I'd be tired. <laughs> Dave, you were saying. And, and so as we were saying, uh, <laughs> you, you just wanted to give him a little uh, little high five there? Yeah, I mean, he's a good friend of mine. It's, uh, it's fun racing with guys you trust like that. So uh, that was a lot of fun. We just, you know, overdrove it a little bit there and slipped the tires uh, here in seven and opened up the door. So uh, he did an awesome job. I mean, he... Uh, he hit his marks every lap, and that was our only shot to get by him is when we went by him the first time. Big picture-wise, this is okay for you guys? Yeah, acceptable day for sure. So uh, we're leaving here with our heads up high and a smile on our face. All right, they wanted to win today. Tony taking a little blame there. Also, crew chief Greg Zibidelli said we could have given you a better car. They came home second today. Bill? Thanks, Dave. Marty, 
Well, Jamie McMurray finishes third today, and uh, that was impressive. Uh, do you think he had anything to get around the 20 and the, and the uh, 29? Well, I thought I could get by Kevin. Um, and, you know, I felt like I was catching him before we made our pit stop, and uh, when we restarted, his car was just so quick. I, my only shot was to pass him in the inner loop. I uh, huge, huge power today with the Roush Yates engines. I uh, up through the S's, it was just incredible the runs I could get on people, and um, it made it so I could pass through the inner loop. After the struggle, they've had third place here at Watkins Glen, Bill. McMurray third, Tony Stewart second, Kevin Harvick the race winner. He's in victory lane, and here's Alan Bestwick. A celebration that speaks for itself as to what it means to this team to be in victory lane again this year. Kevin, I want to take you in steps through the late stages of that race. Nine to go. Tony Stewart goes by you. What are you thinking? I was thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to drive into the into the corner that far and uh, pass him back? But, um, you know, his, it seemed like his brakes were fading. But uh, got to say hi to my wife. She stays home on the road courses. So uh, love you, Delana. Sorry you won't hear. We'll be home late. So uh, this GM Goodwin Chevrolet was... A lot of fun to drive today. It was really good. Got the fenders caved in early and just never gave up. So it's uh, a lot of fun racing with Tony there. And I, I don't know how he passed me in the chicane steel, but uh, my car was really good getting into one. We were able to get back by. I was going to say, how did you pass him back? I knew my only shot was, was getting into one. Um, he had to back up. It seemed like his car didn't have enough brakes getting in there, and it was tight getting to the center. And uh, I knew I was only going to have a couple chances, so it uh, took my chance. and. Off it went and it stuck and we went by. So just want to thank everybody on this car. Snap on Reese's, SKF Emerson, Sherwin Williams, Team Real Tree, GM Card, Sylvania, and my teammates. Blake Boyer there. Yeah, my teammates uh, and Richard for uh, sticking with us and giving us everything we need to make these teams better. So uh, this means a lot, road course win. Uh, this has a lot to do with the driver, the team, and they gave me the opportunity and the track position to do so. So uh, thank Todd and all the guys. It was a lot of fun. We were knowing here on pit road that there were some fuel concerns that the overflow vent had stuck on your car and you were losing some fuel in that last run. How much were they telling you about that? Well, they didn't tell me, uh, but I saw it on TV on the big screen there. <laughs> and I said, well, how much did it lose? Just uh, being able to see it on TV. But, um, you know, at that point, you pretty much got what you got. There's no reason to worry about it. You just do what you got to do and, and uh, go as hard as you can. Want to clue us in on what you and Tony were talking about there? No, oh, we were just, uh, Tony and I are, you know, really good friends, and, and uh, to be able to race each other there at the end is a lot of fun. So uh, we both have big pictures, but we both want to win the race and do everything we can to do that. So it was a lot of fun racing with your buddy. Last question, big picture, you are up to third in the championship now, I thought. Ah, I mean, I think we can win it. Um, you know, once we get to 10 to go, this team has been really consistent, and as long as we don't have bad luck or do something that we hadn't been doing, uh, we should at least have a chance. He says he'll be home late tonight. Kevin Harvick, the winner at Watkins Glen. Dave? Alan, these road courses are where Robbie Gordon can shine. You talked today about being down on horsepower, down on brakes. How disappointed are you with fourth? Well, one leads to the other, but, um, you know, a good run for all the guys at Jim Beam. TEI's guys have been doing us a good job. I know they went a little bit conservative with our motor because they thought that if uh, they gave me something to ran all day, we'd be able to win the deal, and it just wasn't the case. We just got yarded on the straightaways. Um, you know, they've given us good engines all year. Uh, good run for all the boys on Jim Beam crew, and uh, Jim Beam, Harris, uh, Menards, all of our sponsors. Um, it's a good run for us. It'll definitely help us in the points. Talk us through the last restart, Robbie. Last restart, um, you know, just couldn't get close enough to outbreak them. Uh, to be honest with you, you know, I had um, had a little bit of an opportunity there. Um, tried them on the outside and just didn't have anything for them. All right, Robbie Gordon finishes fourth today. It is the sixth time that he has finished fourth or better here at the Glen. Bill? Thanks. And among the other stories we tried to follow up down below, we uh, offered an invitation to Kurt Busch to talk about his day. Uh, he politely declined that inv invitation. Disappointing day for Kurt. Here are the championship standings. Just four races remain before the cutoff and the chase for the next Tell Cup championship begins. Tony Stewart moves up. Benny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 10th. And you look at the rest of them. And just to clarify a point, we attempted to get uh, Kurt Busch. We were unable to get to him for a post-race interview. Don't forget, next weekend, NASCAR heads to Michigan on TNT. Saturday at 2 Eastern, it's final cup practice, then Busch Series racing. And on Sunday, the race for the chase continues at 2 p.m. Eastern.
Next up on NBC, it's the men's final at the AVP Manhattan Beach Open. And don't forget Sunday Night Football tonight with John Madden and Al Michaels from Cincinnati. For our entire race family, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for joining us here at the Glen. Kevin Harvick is the race winner. Now, let's join Chris Marlowe.